this is certainly not uh, anything to do with uh, curbing editorial or content creation. This is an unwavering uh, commitment to making sure the internet in India is safe and trusted. We certainly don't want misinformation, fake information and patently false information, especially from cross-border state actors and vested interests to create dissonance, create chaos and create any uh, challenges to the Indian democracy or indeed the safety and trust of the Indian internet. One more thing, Mr. Chandrasekhar, uh, how will the body work to fight this misinformation? And right now you have given the entire power to PIB to take down the any, any false or fake content from social media. Are there any plans in your mind which organization it will be, which particular body it will be? I want to certainly clarify to you that the rules that were notified yesterday do not say PIB. Uh, we do not uh, mention that PIB will be the fact-checking unit. So the rules say that the government of India, i.e. the METI, this ministry, will notify an institution that will be the fact checker for the government. Now, there are many ways of looking at that institution, but I can certainly commit to, through you, to the viewers, that this fact checking unit will be a fact checking unit that will do its work credibly, transparently, and will, will earn the trust of those it is fact-checking, which is the social media intermediaries. It is our commitment that this will be an institution that will be built that will be creating trust and credibility amongst the social media intermediaries who will be the most uh, availing uh, entities of this fact-checking unit. Right now, what we see is that there's no barring of content on social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook. So if we say that any false information is posted on social media platforms like Twitter or Facebook, what will be the swift procedure to assess and remove it? Look, I want to also say that the fact-checking unit does not ask anybody to take down content. It will only point out that this is misinformation or this is patently false information. It is left to the social media intermediaries to either take it down or if they choose to keep something that is fake or keep that as misinformation, they essentially have only one consequence which is that the safe harbor under section 79 that protects them from any legal cases will, will be dropped and then they will be in a legal dispute with whoever is aggrieved by the uh, fake information or patently false information. So the safe harbor and the immunity that they enjoy from having a legal case put on them for fake information or misinformation will, cert will, will be dropped and they will be in a, in a dispute, legal dispute in a court of law between the person who is aggrieved by the fake information and the platform that is carrying the fake information. That is the only consequence that comes out of it. There is no power in the government of India under these rules to take down content. We can only flag misinformation. We can only flag patently false information through this entity. It is up to the intermediary to decide to take it down or, yeah, or, take it down or not. One more thing. Uh, so now the entire framing of this amendment is already done by the IT ministry, sir, you. So now we can say there are many institutions and foundations which are alleging that government's this move is unconstitutional. What's your response to them? No, look, I mean, the, uh, people will say what they have to say, that, but we have done everything that we, our government does, everything our ministry does is done with extensive consultation. It is done with extensive legal consultation. It's done with extensive consultation with stakeholders, including users and intermediaries and industry and other stakeholders. So therefore, there is no question of anything being unconstitutional. This is uh, usually being pandered by those who are in election mode and those who want to create politics out of everything. Uh, this is an important step and a decisive step as in October 2022 to make the Indian internet fight the scourge of misinformation, fight the scourge of uh, uh, patently false information in a manner where every one of our 100 crore digital nagriks will enjoy an internet, can trust the internet and trust the information that is put on the internet. One more thing, do you have any response for the Congress as well, sir? Because they have been hitting the government on this move where they are saying that this move is uh, to curtail their right of speech and freedom of speech on social media platform and government has done this against them. 
I think uh, I, I usually do not respond to the Congress because there is not very much that they say that is worth responding to. But I can certainly say that the Congress, which is the pioneer for Section 66A in the IT Act, which had to be struck down by a Supreme Court when I was a member of Parliament, which is a pioneer of using the law to imprison cartoonists, should not open their mouth about anything to do with this because what this government does is for the safety and trust of 100 crore digital nagriks. Our fight to keep the internet safe and trusted will be unwavering. Our fight to keep misinformation and fake information out of the internet is unwavering. And this fight is does not represent any threat to every citizen's right to free speech, every everybody, every Indian's right to free speech, and I want to clarify through your to your viewers that this is the first government that, in the rules, have enshrined that no platform can violate the fundamental right of any Indian citizen, Article 14, 19, or 21. This is written in the rules that Article 14, 19, and 21 cannot be violated of Indian citizens. So this government is a trustee of Indians' fundamental rights and certainly will not play havoc with fundamental rights that the Congress has during the emergency or with Section 66A. So this is IT Minister, MOS IT, IT and Electronics Minister Rajiv Chandra Shekhar speaking exclusively to us on the fact checker body now the amendment which has been done in the new IT rule. Along with video journalist Anup Sasangi, Harsha Sunwani for Republic TV. Alright, so there you heard uh, Rajiv Chandra Shekhar speak exclusively to Republic on the changes that have been made to the new IT rules. Uh, but uh, here on, let's move on to news coming in. From Bollbound State, Karnataka, that is all set to go for polls on 10th of May. The latest coming in, uh, the Congress making uh, the minority issue, the quota issue, number one issue in the Bollbound State. A statement uh, that has also come in from the Karnataka Congress Chief D.K. Shivakumar, who says that uh, we will cancel the reservation issue and will protect the minority interest if the Congress comes to power in the state of Karnataka. Now remember the state is all set to go for polls on 10th of May and the results will of course be declared on 13th of May. And uh, with the polls uh, of course nearing uh, in the state, uh, DK Shivu Kumar making that big statement saying that uh, the Congress would cancel the reservation issue and will protect the minority interest in the state of Karnataka. Let's go across uh, to Prajwal who's been getting us the news breaks from Karnataka. Prajwal, now even as Congress is making this minority issue a big one, uh, if you can break it down for us because there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, while the political blame game continues, uh, the opposition says that the quota has been done away with, with, but in reality it has been brought under the EWS section. Uh, absolutely, Samiksha. Here, two things are of important, uh, you know, of uh, of important value over here for the people of Karnataka as well. Mainly to do with the 2C and 2D reservation, and also with doing of the 2B reservation. But uh, apart from which, the Congress is also stating that it will not only scrap the reservation policy which has now been introduced, but also the internal reservations as well. So this is something which will become a bone of contention in the days to come as well. Because initially, it started off uh, with uh, the scrapping of 4% reservation for the Muslims under the 2B category and 2% uh, of it was given to the Vokaligas under 2C category and 2% of it was given to the uh, Panchamasali Lingites under the 2D category as well. But what happened was the Muslims who were still fighting amongst themselves for reservation or who were competing amongst themselves for reservation under only 4% were moved to economically weaker sections where now they have a broader opportunity to go ahead and claim reservation under 10% because for, uh, yes. for the economically weaker sections it is 10% percent reservation. Apart from which, there is also internal reservation which the Congress is speaking about scrapping on, which is the SC and ST reservation here. For the scheduled caste, it is 17 yes. percent and for uh, the scheduled... Prashwal, I'm tribes, sorry, I'll have to interrupt you for a moment. Hold your thoughts. Let's go to Malvika Avinash of the BJP joining us. Uh, Malvika Avinash, we there uh, heard the bite, uh, sound bite of DK Shivakumar who says that if the Congress is going to come to power in the state of uh, Karnataka, it's going to uh, bring back that... Uh, minority quota and would protect the minority interest. Uh, what do you have to say about the political blame game that has erupted over the minority quota issue in the state? The quota that was made, the provision that was made for the minorities within what was meant to be for Hindu community is unconstitutional. And therefore the BJP government moved 
the reservation, the 4% meant for the Muslims, to the EWS quota, which is very economically weaker thing. Mr. Shivakumar can sing tall tales, but will it stand the test of law? That's something that we have to think about. These are false promises that he knows he can't keep after the election, which he is doing only for the purpose of a peace. Malvika Avinash, if you can once again, for our viewers who are just tuning in, uh, if you can once again set the uh, record straight here, because while the opposition says that the Muslim quota has been done away with, in reality it has been brought under the EWS section. Yes, you see, in 1994, at the behest of Mr. Deve Gauda, the Muslims, those who are economically of the weaker sections among the Muslims, were brought under this reservation quota, which is essentially meant for castes and communities belonging to the Hindu religion. The Muslims are a minority and are treated as a different set of people by the constitution of India. They cannot be brought under reservations provided for, by, uh, for the Hindus under the constitution. Mr. Deve Gowda somehow did it in those days for the purpose of appeasement, for the purpose of Muslim votes, and the Congress backed him on it. Now the BJP, which is in power, has set right the record and essentially undertaken what is according to the Constitution. The religious groups cannot be provided reservation under what is meant for the Hindus. Other minority groups cannot be provided for. The same has been moved to the economically weaker section. The 4% that they were getting under the reservations have now moved to the economically weaker section where there is 10% available and they will get four of that. So nothing is lost. It's only a change of the grouping. However, the uh, Congress can go go on till the elections are over because their eyes are only on the vote bank. They cannot keep this promise that they are making to the Muslim community simply because it's unconstitutional. It will not stand the test of law. For speaking to us so there, uh, BJP leader Malvika Avinash speaking to the public. In fact, let's go across to S. Prakash of the BJP also joining us. Mr. Prakash, if you can also set the record straight here, because even as the Congress maintains that it's going to look into the minority issues if it comes to power in the state, in reality, while the Muslim quota has may have been removed, it has been brought under the EWS section in the state. All right, I'm not sure if we have uh, S. Prakash with us, but we'll try to connect with him again. Uh, Prajwal, of course, continues to be with us. Prajwal, uh, if you can once again take us through the kind of reactions that have been coming in, not just from the Congress, but from the JDS as well. Uh, when you talk about this Muslim quota that has been removed uh, in the state of uh, Karnataka, remember DK Shivakumar has given us some right? He stated, uh, spoken to the media, saying that if Congress comes to power in the state of Karnataka, it's going to look after the interests of minority community. This, of course, comes after uh, the Muslim quota has been removed by the Bumai government in the state, which is now been brought under the EWS section. Prajwal, uh, we were talking here about the reaction that have come in from the JDS so far on the Muslim quota matter. Uh, absolutely. Now, uh, H.D. Kumaraswamy is also speaking on the same lines because uh, remember that in 1994, it was the JDS Supremo H.D. Deve Gowda who made these changes and brought the Muslims under the 4% reservation category and uh, giving them a separate category altogether under 2B as well. According to the BJP, it was being, it is now, you know, according to the BJP, they were stating that uh, the JDS was going in for uh, uh, appeasing uh, the voters from the minority communities, but uh, according to what the JDS had stated, uh, they uh, went ahead and maintained that they were doing this mainly on the census as well and also on the basis of the population of Muslims in the state of Karnataka and therefore it was viable and valid too. So this is what the JDS has been stating so far but uh, they have still not spoken about whether they will be bringing back the reservation for Muslims if they are voted into power uh, by uh, scrapping the reservation policy which has now been introduced by Chief Minister Basfraj Bomai's government. But altogether now uh, DK Shivkumar 
Kumar is not making the statement for the first time. Now and again, he's repeatedly making these statements along with the leader of the opposition, Sidramaya, as well, where both of them are stating that the BJP is against the Muslims. They're mainly against the minorities and therefore they have scrapped the reservation. And as soon as their government comes into power within the first 30 days, they will make sure that they scrap this policy completely. So this is something which will have to be watched out for uh, Samiksha. But uh, this is turning out into a huge political battle in the state of Karnataka and all this for the sake of appeasement is what the... Absolutely, Prajwal. I'm requesting you to stay with us. Let's take a word from uh, S. Prakash, who's back with us. Mr. Prakash, uh, if I can get your thoughts on JDS objecting to uh, Kitsha Sadeep, who would now be campaigning uh, for the BJP in uh, the state of Karnataka. No, the, both these political parties are attacked by the support of uh, Sudeep to BJP. And they want to uh, start his campaign in... Uh, by complaining to the election commission. If there is any uh, rule by the election commission that his movies cannot be telecasted or his uh, commercial cannot be telecasted, it is for the election commission to take the decision. Let this uh, political party complain to the EC. They have every right to do so and we are not uh, rattled, uh, disturbed by that. Let the law take its... All right, there seems to be a network problem. We'll try and connect with S. Prakash again. But uh, the latest we're given to understand uh, is that the JDS now, after the Congress, uh, seems to be objecting to Kitsha Sudeep's campaigning for the BJP in the pole-bound state, Karnataka. All right, so interesting turn of events there in the state of Karnataka that is all set to go for polls on 10th of May with DK Shivakumar making uh, appeasement of the minority community as number one poll blank, uh, plank in the state of Karnataka. Remember the results uh, for the polls would be announced on 13th of May. Uh, for now, a quick roundup of all that's making news from across the country. Stoking yet another controversy, Tamil Nadu Governor R.N. Ravi on Thursday term, the 2018 protest in Tutukudi that led to the closure of Vedanta owned Sterlite Cooper as purely foreign funded. Uh, the governor further said that uh, it was done to hamper country's growth. Swati Maliwal, chairperson of Delhi Commission for Women, conducted a surprise check in a public toilet opposite a hospital in Darya Ganj and seized 50 litres of acid lying in open. A mob attacked police personnel during a raid at the residence of an accused in Bihar's uh, Nogachia area on Thursday night. The villagers alleged that the police assaulted the accused wife and the child. High-level security review meet of JNK situation to take place today, according to sources. The agenda of the meeting is to discuss the prevailing security scenario and strengthen the security grid ahead of the upcoming Amarnath Yatra in JNK. Hearing back at Union Minister Jyotir Aditya Sindhya and former Congress leader Gulam Nabi Azad for targeting Rahul Gandhi, Rajasthan Chief Minister Gehlot said that no one had thought that the duo would start speaking such a low-level language against the Gandhi side. Stoking yet another controversy, Tamil Nadu Governor R.N. Ravi on Thursday termed the 2018 protest in Tutukuri that led to the closure of Vedanta-owned Sterlite Cooper as purely foreign-funded. The UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath expressed grief after three people lost their lives in a road accident in Varaj district. And in news from South 24, Parganas in West Bengal where a massive fire broke out at a railway station in West Bengal's South 24 Parganas district on Thursday evening. And Prime Minister Modi, who's all set to inaugurate and lay foundation stone of projects worth more than 11,000 crore rupees in the state, besides flagging off Sikandra Tirupati Vande Bharat Express on Saturday.
And uh, in news from JNK, where a high-level security meet would be taking place uh, very shortly. This, of course, ahead of the Amarnath Yatra, which is all set to begin in JNK uh, in the next few months. A high-level security review meeting on the prevailing security scenario in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will take place today late afternoon. The meeting will be chaired by the officials from the Ministry of Home Affairs in which the top brass of Jammu and Kashmir Police, the Border Security Force, Indian Army, CRPF and other intelligence agencies, those who have been part of the security grid will be taking part in this meeting. Important to mention that this meeting will take place in the uh, Kashmir Valley in which uh, the DGP and and both the ADGs of the Jammu as well as the Kashmir zone, they will be putting forth a thorough plan for the upcoming Amarnath Yatra as it is going to be really very crucial. So does the threat perception that remains and also the recent incidents that have taken place including the multiple attempts from Pakistan to push narcotics weapons into the Indian territory and also the Dhangri terror attack, uh, the perpetrators of which are still at large will be discussed. With Sir Jeevan Kumar, Gursimran Singh for Public Media Network. And uh, that's all we have for you in this edition of our broadcast. But do not go anywhere. Coming up on the other side, the latest on the massive political storm that has now erupted over Tamil Nadu governor's statement on the Sterla Sterlite Cooper protest way back in 2018. And Telangana BJP chief receives grand welcome, holds mega rally in a show of strength after being released from the jail. How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water. And this is a great success and I would like us to work more closely on that. In regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been two different FIRs, one being in the uh, Karimnagar jurisdiction and the another FIR which was filed is under Varangal jurisdiction. The legal cell of Bharatiya Janta Party and the Bandi Sanjay's team says that the manner in which Bandi Sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the Supreme Court guidelines. On that line, uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the High Court and there's a bail petition which is filed in Varangal Court. So we'll have to wait and watch for further developments. India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first. When we see that the masterminds, the plotters of this attack are, are still unpunished, they are still roaming free, what can India and Israel do together to ensure that the plotters, the mastermind of this attack... I'm Shivangi Shukla. And India's biggest new summit is just back shortly. The third edition of the Republic Summit will be held in the national capital this month. The biggest names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change and transformation in India will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. It's time to see what's making the headlines.
Madra Congress wipe out continues 24 hours after Anil Anthony Kiran Kumar ready. Dumps party joins the BJP. Over 6,000 cases in last 24 hours, Union Health Minister holds COVID review meet with other state health ministers. Enforcement Directorate arrests Kingpin KT Ramis in Kerala gold smuggling case. Battle for Karnataka heats up Bomai and team in the national capital to chalk out a strategy. It was a purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest, unfortunate police firing. Tamil Nadu governor sparks a controversy, claims foreign link to sterlite protest. DMK hits out. The Lengana BJP chief and receives grand welcome post mega rally in a show of strength after being released from jail. Viewers, let's go to our top story we're tracking right now. Tamil Nadu governor. R. N. Ravi sparked a fresh controversy a short while back, saying that the 2018 anti sterilite protest in Tutikorin were foreign funded. The governor said that the sterilite protest, it was purely foreign funded and the entire activities which led to the protest and the unfortunate police firing that cost innocent lives. His remarks drew a sharp reaction from the ruling DMK and the protesters who vowed to state a stir against the governor. Today, external the foreign elements are not in a position to take on India directly so our vulnerability is within create issues create disharmony create a situation which is which stops the progress create tensions create riots now take the case of Esther Light. This is uh, in uh, Tuttukodi. It was a purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest, unfortunate police firing. And that cost un innocent lives. That is a very sad part of it. But they wanted this port, this in this Esther Light to be closed because that esterlite produced 40% of our copper need. And you know how copper is important for electronic industry. They closed it. All right, viewers, so we heard that statement. Now, Tamil Nadu, Governor Arun Revi has sparked a, a big controversy when he said that uh, the 2018 anti sterlite protest in Tutikorin, they were foreign funded viewers and uh, uh, this coming in, remember that uh, this coming in viewers as something which is drawing a lot of criticism, a lot of criticism, sharp reactions are coming in from the ruling DMK and the protesters who have vowed to stage a stir against the governor. So we're getting these back to back details coming in at this point of time. The governor's remarks are drawing a sharp criticism. We also saw that uh, DMK leader Kanimoi. She has said, I condemn the governor who is demeaning the protest. So we're getting a reaction coming in uh, from the DMK as well, where the DMK is condemning this entire statement of uh, the governor there. And we're getting these details coming in, a big controversy right now erupting viewers on uh, which we are tracking for you on Republic TV. So uh, the, what he said was a sterilite protest. It was purely foreign funded. And the entire activity which led to the protest and the unfortunate police firing that caused innocent lives. This is what he said in response to a question on the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act, FCR, FCRA violation, during the event which happened there in Chennai, viewers. So we're getting these back-to-back -back details coming in right now. Many reactions coming in as well. Let's play them out. Today, external, the foreign elements are not in a position to take on India directly. 
so our vulnerability is within create issues create disharmony create a situation which is which stops the progress create tensions create riots now take the case of esterlite there is uh, in uh, tutukodi it was a purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest unfortunate police firing and that cost un- innocent lives that is a very sad part of it but they wanted this port this in this ester light to be closed because that ester light produced 40% of our copper need and you know how copper is important for electronic industry they close all right i'm joined right back over by satyan ai dm ke spokesperson joining us here on the phone line on republic and thank you for joining us your first reaction coming in uh, because uh, this re- this reva coming in from the tamil nadu governor on sterlite protest has stoked a big controversy it is a well known fact that uh, the vendata sterlite flouted uh, pollution norms and they were indeed fined a couple of times so the agitation by the people is their democratic rights but one cannot negate the fact that anti social elements were behind the uh, protest at the 100th day even after the factory was closed as per the public demand as per the tutikodi uh, people demand the factory was shut and closed the protest was ongoing we provided a shelter to the protesters because they had the democratic right to protest but the anti social and anti anti national events uh, seeped in and they instigated people and used innocent people as their shield in this protest and yes there is a link between these anti social elements and those who wants india to be uh, defeated on many parameters particularly on the development and growth and that's what uh, governor has stated and in ke pick and choose certain words of governor governor is to suit their own political narrative indeed there is a commission by dmk which submitted rather than coming out with the findings of the commission and countering the governor dmk pick and choose of selective words from the governor and trying to build a political narrative is what shows the true color because dmk was behind this protest instigating the protests and supporting the anti social elements All right. Uh, thank you, Kovai. Satyan, uh, AIDM ke spokesperson, joining us here. So this was a, a comment which has come in from the Tamil Nadu governor where uh, he has said the sterile protests in Tutikurin uh, were foreign funded and that has stoked a big uh, controversy with the DMK hitting out at the Tamil Nadu governor. Let's move ahead, viewers. Getting some breaking updates coming in right now. Getting some breaking updates. Uh, it's a big statement being made by the vice president. Jagdeep Dhankar who has now said that some foreign organizations are working with hidden motives and they give us knowledge that how is our India and their real objective is to curb the rising speed of India. All right viewers we're getting this uh, breaking news coming in where we are seeing that um, this reaction and a statement coming in from the vice president let's play out what the vice president had to say. कुछ विदेशी संस्थाएं कार्यरत हैं और वो हमको ज्ञान देती हैं कि हमारा भारत कैसा है वो हमें बताते हैं हमारे नीचे की जमीन कैसी है जिसकी जानकारी हमको है और उनका उद्देश्य है भारत की उभरती हुई गति पर अंकुश लगाना अमेरिका में भी ऐसी संस्थान है पर चिंताजनक तीन बातें हैं वहां पर जो पीठ कायम की जाती है हमारे अरबपति उद्योगपति उसमें करोड़ों देते हैं मैं नहीं कहता कि उनकी नीयत खराब है पर शायद यह बात उनके ध्यान से उतर गई है उस करोड़ों के योगदान की वजह से वहां अपने ही कुछ लोग इस प्रकार के कार्यक्रम की रचना करते हैं 
कि हम भारत को धूमिल कर दें मैंने अध्ययन किया है उन संस्थाओं के अंदर अनेक देशों के विद्यार्थी और अध्यापक हैं अनेक देशों के हैं पर ये अनुचित कार्य हमारे ही कुछ लोग क्यों करते हैं किसी और देश के लोग क्यों नहीं करते हैं ये बड़े सोच और चिंतन का विषय है All right, viewers. So, so that's a big statement coming in. A big statement coming in. The vice president there, Jagdeep Dhankar, said that the foreign, the foreign organizations are working with a hidden motive, and they're giving us knowledge. They're giving us knowledge about how India, how India is, how India should run its internal affairs. But the real objective he's saying of these anti-India forces is to curb the rising speed of India. So that is a big statement coming in from the vice president. Let's move ahead, viewers. Getting some more details coming in this time from Karnataka. Remember, Karnataka is going to go to polls very, very shortly. Now we are hearing that in poll-bound Karnataka, Congress has made the Muslim quota. The Congress has made the Muslim quota the number one issue, saying that if voted to power, they will restore the Muslim quota, viewers. So it looks like that the Congress is number one poll plank. The number one poll plank coming in. Is uh, the Muslim quota viewers, and that is the big, big update that uh, we have got for you here on Republic TV. Now, remember that uh, the parties have started taking out their lists all as of candidates as well. Uh, the entire preparation is on from all the party side at this time as the Karnataka elections come closer and closer by the day. Application we have given was two lists. BJP could not raise its list yet, but I am confident we will have a government with our own, and uh, there is no internal problems in any of the candidates. Some of them are the aspiring, but still I will say all those uh, issues. Karnataka, see, Karnataka after BJP government took away the 4% reservation whatever they had for minorities. No one will look at all this issue. The only issue will be defeating the BJP. So they all will support the Congress party minorities. We will also stand by them. As soon as our government comes, we will whatever we will uh, cancel that whatever uh, reservation issue and we will protect the minority interest. All right, let's go straight to Prajwal is joining us live. Prajwal, I'm coming to you right now and Karnataka elections are not too far away. In fact, uh, as we near them, we are getting many details coming out this time. This time we are seeing the Congress is making the reservations, the reservations uh, for Muslims, the number one issue in the state, Prajwa. Uh, yes, Shivangi, it seems to be like a pole plank uh, for the Congress ahead of the elections as well because it's not the first time that D.K. Shivkumar is speaking about uh, scrapping off the new reservation policy which has been introduced by the Bombay government because even in the past he's also spoken on the same lines and adding on to that, Sidramaya also has gone on and stated that they will scrap internal reservation and also they will make sure that uh, the, Muslim gets, uh, the Muslims get the 4% reservation which uh, was uh, there earlier for the minority as well. But uh, now what is uh, turned out to be a huge uh, problem and a headache for the Congress even if they plan to do that is the fact that they will have to antagonize uh, the Vakkaligas as well as uh, uh, as well as the Lingites as well because these four, the 4% which was taken from the minorities has now been given to the 2C category which is the Vakkaligas where their reservation has increased from 4% to 6% and uh, the Lingites reservation under the 2D category has increased from 5% to 7% now. So where will the addition 
additional 4% come in now because in the state of Karnataka, even though right now there has been a proposal which has been sent by the state to the centre to bring the SCST under uh, under the constitution, under the Schedule 9 as well to get it some legal protection, it has not been done so far. There has only been a proposal sent. And the reservation in Karnataka has now jumped to 56%. Initially it was 49%, but now it has increased to 56%, meaning to state that it will not be valid uh, constitutionally, legally it will not be valid as well. So how does the Congress plan to bring back the 4% reservation? Will they antagonize the other communities or how will they proceed? What is the way forward for the Congress? This has to be thought from a legal perspective. But on the other hand, when it comes to appeasement politics, the Congress doing this has uh, definitely not come as a surprise at any point of time and recently. And, and just a few minutes ago when we also spoke to the BJP MLC, Mr. Chalwadi Narayan Swami, he stated that the Congress has always been anti-Muslim and it was in fact the JDS in 1994 under H.D. Devegowda who brought in 4% reservation for the minorities even though it was unconstitutional taking at that point of time the census into consideration too. So this is something which will have to be you know mentioned now and also conveniently the Congress is somewhere forgetting to mention the fact that the Muslims have already been added under the economically weaker section meaning to state that they will have 10% reservation and they will have more scope here to get the reservation made be under jobs or educational too. So this is something which will be evenly contested out by all the three parties in Karnataka ahead of the elections. Right, right. Okay, uh, Prajwal, thank you for getting us all the details. And Prajwal was telling us that BJP government had scrapped a 30-year-old four-person reservation for the Muslims under the other backward classes and redistributed the same to two other two other. Uh, uh, communities there. So after that, we are seeing that uh, this move of the Congress coming in where they're making the quota for Muslims in number one poll plank. Thank you, Prajwal. Let's take a very short break, viewers, as we continue to be live and breaking. Coming up next, uh, a Tamil Nadu governor sparking a big controversy, claiming foreign link to stir live protests. DMK hits up. And Telangana BJP chief receives grand welcome, holds a mega rally in a show of strength after being released from jail. Stay tuned. Thirteen thousand placements last year. At Amity, we are committed to nurturing passionate, hardworking, and proactive professionals. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone, alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, hey, I've come to inspect you without the system approving it. सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं। जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है, तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं। प्रधानमंत्री जी, हमने भी ठान लिया है, हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा। How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water. And this is a great success and I would like us to work more closely on that. In regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been
Mr. Ohana, you as a speaker of Knesset, how do you see upholding the democracy? And I'm not, I'm talking at a time when uh, there have been protests and in fact, the issues between the two countries are sort of on the same level. We want Israel to be a better democracy, which means more decisions should be taken by the public through their representative. And unfortunately, we have an unbalanced situation and we are trying to balance it. As you mentioned, it is a matter of dispute and we have protests as we have in democracies. U.S. top sports updates. A super performance by Kolkata Knight Rider spinners led by Varun Chakravarti and Suhash Sharma, who's making his debut, helped the home side clinch win over Royal Challengers Bangalore in their Indian Premier League match at Eden Gardens on Thursday. The Kolkata Knight Riders and West Indies bowling all-rounder Sunil completed 150 matches in his Indian Premier League career on Thursday. He accomplished this landmark during the match against Royal Challengers Bangalore. England pacer Rhys Topley, who was brought by Royal Challengers Bangalore for the ongoing Indian Premier League, has been ruled out of the league after suffering a right shoulder dislocation during his side's opening match against Mumbai Indians. Punjab Kings and England all-rounder Liam Livingstone is likely to miss his side's Indian Premier League 2023 clash against Sunrisers Hyderabad on Sunday but could arrive in India in time to return from injury in the match against Gujarat Titans. Ravi is getting these uh, details coming in right now. Visuals coming in of the Kerala CM right there on the spot. The Kerala CM is visiting the uh, victim's family of the train fire incident which took place. A very unfortunate incident which had taken place. We can see that the Kerala CM Pinarayi Vijayan visiting the train fire incident victim's families there viewers. So we're getting these details coming in at this point of time. Uh, the Kerala CM is uh, is uh, with the family of the victims. The investigation, the case is on right now as well. A short while back, uh, the Kerala government has also announced compensation of 5 lakh each of the families of the victims who died in the train fire. And that decision was earlier made by the cabinet, the meeting chaired by the Chief Minister Pineri Vijayan. So right now, viewers, we're seeing that uh, the Chief Minister... Pinarayi Vijayan is with the victims' uh, families and relatives, meeting the families of the victims there. It's a very, very unfortunate incident which has uh, which had occurred. The Kerala CM also saying and uh, stressing on the fact that uh, the tracking and the nabbing of the accused has to happen as soon as possible. Already one accused, one accused already is going to appear in court very shortly. His medical is taking place today. But uh, the visuals coming in of the Kerala CM with the families of the victims. Let's go straight across to Shavan, who's joining us on the phone line. Uh, Shavan, we are seeing that the uh, the CM meeting the families of the victims. At the same time, we are seeing that the investigative agencies have also been working day and night to nab the accused in this case. One arrest has already taken place, the main accused. Having said that, the Kerala ATS as well as the central agencies are still looking for whether at all there have been any accomplices of the main accused in this particular case. Searches have been carried out in the national capital too. So far, there is no clarity whether at all he was working all by himself or did he, was he working in a group. Whether at all he is associated with any sort of terror organization is also not very clear at this point in time. Having said that, what they're essentially working at is they are looking at whether he was radicalized and more importantly, were there any specific instructions given to him to carry out this attack in a train in the state of Kerala. 
Just to recap for all our viewers, when the incident actually took place on Saturday, thereafter the main accused actually tried to run away from Kerala and finally he was traced out in Maharashtra where he was receiving a treatment and uh, he was then brought back to Kerala for further interrogation. Right. Well, thank you, Shravan, for getting us all the details. So the CM meeting the family members of the victims after that terrible Kerala train fire incident which had transpired on April 2nd, viewers. Taking a very short break, much more coming up on the other side. The India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first. When we see that the masterminds, the plotters of this attack are, are still unpunished, they are still roaming free, what can India and Israel do together to ensure that the plotters, the mastermind of this attack are punished? Everyone that took part of the terror attacks pays the price, a very heavy price. So we are still waiting for those who committed, those who sent, those who operated those terror attacks to be brought to justice and indeed we need to bring very serious pressure from all the world, from all the free world who stands against terrorism. इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही है ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से इन डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेट अस एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज मीडिएशन विल वर्क व्हेन देयर इज एन Our right, viewers, uh, visuals coming in right now, where you can see that the CM, Kerala CM meeting the victim's family of the Kerala fire uh, train case, a very unfortunate incident which had transpired and he's meeting the family members right now. The main accused has been nabbed and he will be produced in court viewers. The CM already announcing ex gratia for the families of the victims of five lakhs. Taking a very short break, much more coming up on the other side as we continue to be live and breaking. 13,000 placements last year. At Amity, we are committed to nurturing passionate, hardworking, and proactive professionals. आप सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी हमने भी ठान लिया है हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water. And this is a great success. And I would like us to work more closely on that. Hey, 
in regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been two different FIRs, one being in the uh, Karimnagar jurisdiction and the another FIR which was filed is under Varangal jurisdiction. The legal cell of Bharatiya Janata Party and the Bandi Sanjay's team says that the manner in which Bandi Sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the Supreme Court guidelines. On that line, uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the High Court and there's a bail petition which is filed in Varangal Court. So we'll have to wait and watch for further developments. India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that Starting with some breaking news coming in at this point in time, Haryana Chief Minister has raised the issue of discrimination with the Indian student at London School of Economics and in fact he has written a letter to the LSE in this regard. News coming in from Haryana over the uh, harassment of an Indian student, uh, discrimination against an Indian student at the London School of Economics. And my colleague Samiksha is joining us uh, live from the newsroom. Uh, Samiksha, this is a big development. Haryana Chief Minister, the state uh, where, the, uh, where this, this Indian student who has been discriminated against uh, belongs to. Uh, the Chief Minister has taken cognizance and written to the LSE. What are the content? What is the content of the letter like? Well, that's right, Rakshita. And, you know, to begin with, let's tell our viewers also that he's alleged uh, that he's being targeted at LSE just because uh, what he says is a Hindu nationalist. In fact, uh, latest what we understand is that LSE has responded to a letter that was written by the Haryana Chief Minister uh, stating how uh, the Indian student was targeted at LSE. Now, this is the letter that was uh, earlier written by Manohar Lal Khattar to LSE to which uh, LSE has now responded. So, quickly taking you through the content of this letter that was written by the Haryana Chief Minister. Uh, by the Haryana Chief Minister uh, to, L, uh, to LSE where he stated that I have been informed that Kataria, a postgraduate student at uh, the London School of Economics and Political Science is facing discrimination and harassment in the, you know, uh, in the institute. I have been inf informed that Kataria was disqualified from elections to the post of General Secretary of the London School of Economics Students Union. Now remember, uh, earlier Karan Kataria had even spoken to Republic to which he said uh, that he's been uh, bullied, he's been harassed only because uh, of the campaigning that he did while he was campaigning for uh, the student union elections at the LAC. Uh, he goes on to say, the Chief Minister here, I'm concerned that this incident and its effects will affect uh, the studies of Kataria, who is a brilliant student uh, as uh, evidenced by his admission to your prestigious institute. But due to recent events, he's been feeling unsafe within the institute campus. So very categorically, the Haryana Chief Minister there saying that uh, how Kataria, Karan Kataria, who's been studying at LSE, uh, feels unsafe uh, at this university campus. In fact, uh, LSE has even responded to uh, the letter that was written by the Haryana Chief Minister uh, to the LSE. Now, just taking you through the contents of uh, this letter uh, to which uh, the LSE has now replied to the Haryana Chief Minister saying uh, the letter that was received by the college uh, on 5th of April concerning the recent LSE student union election and the situation regarding Karan Kataria. At the outset, I want to state categorically that bullying and discrimination and harassment are completely unacceptable and that LSE is committed to robustly, swiftly investigating and tackling any instant of such. Uh, so, uh, this, the you know, college here maintaining that there has been no bullying, no harassing of uh, the student here who's been studying at LSE. But remember, uh, Rakshita, uh, Karan Kataria, while he spoke to Republic, had stated that right. how he was category, how he was bullied and harassed and that uh, the student, uh, the college did not uh, take cognizance of uh, these issues that were even flagged uh, to the college authorities. Right.
Absolutely. And uh, Samiksha, of course, we have seen that uh, LSC has been prompt in its reply, but we haven't seen any uh, strict action that has been taken yet. They're still saying that they're probing the incident. But nevertheless, thank you so much, Samiksha, for joining us with all those details on that story. We'll keep a track on uh, the other developments that keep coming in on thank that you. story. But meanwhile, it's now time for our segment of Super Fast 50, getting you all the news from India and across the globe. BJP Telangana State President Bandi Sanjay has been released from Karim Nagar Jail. He was arrested by the state police on Tuesday night in the 10th, Class 10 question paper leak case and was produced before the court on Wednesday. After the Hanam Konda court in Warangal district granted bail to Telangana, Chief, uh, Telangana BJP Chief Bandi Sanjay, uh, Bandi alleged conspiracy by BRS and said that everyone knows what the Telangana government is doing. Tamil Nadu Governor Arun Ravi sparked another controversy on Thursday when he said that the 2018 anti sterlite protests in Tutukuri were foreign funded. His remarks drew sharp reactions from the ruling DMK and the protesters who vowed to stage a stir against the governor. Now take the case of Esterlite. This uh, in uh, Tutukuri. It was a purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest unfortunate police firing and that cost un innocent lives that is a very sad part of it senior congress leader p chidambaram hit out at tamil nadu governor arun ravi's remarks on his discretion to withhold bills passed by the state legislator he said that the bjp appointed governors are trampling upon democracy by transgressing their powers Kingpin of the Kerala gold smuggling case, KT Ramiz, was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate. According to the probe agency, Ramiz was the facilitator of the scam and was said to be in direct touch with the investors. Despite court order, Aam Aadmi Party remains defiant. Jailed Aam Aadmi Party leader Manish Sisodia has written a letter addressing the people of the country, alleging that Prime Minister Modi does not understand the importance of education. With polls approaching, the battle for Karnataka is heating up. Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraj Bomai and team are in the national capital to chalk out a strategy for the upcoming elections. BJP is set to hold a high-level meeting at the party office on the 9th of April to put out the final list of candidates who will be contesting in the upcoming Karnataka Assembly elections. Notably, the BJP's candidature list for upcoming state polls will end all the attacks that have been launched by the Congress, which has repeatedly said that the BJP party is scared to release the names of its candidates who will be fighting elections in Karnataka. In yet, in yet another big jolt to the Congress, uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, former Chief Minister Kiran Kumar Reddy joined the BJP. This development will provide a significant boost to the party who wants to expand its political presence in the southern states. As for the most recent updates, a Kerala court sent Shah Rukh Saifi, the prime suspect in the train fire incident in a Kannur bound train that left three dead and several injured, to 14 day judicial custody. In a big statement, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar said that some foreign organizations are working with hidden motive and they give us knowledge that how is our India, how our India is and their real objective is to curb the rising speed of India. The remarks come days after Germany and UK spoke on India's internal affairs. Ahead of elections in Karnataka, ruckus broke out between Congress and BJP workers and tensions continue to simmer in the aftermath. Section 144 has been imposed in Surapura constituency after 10 have been injured, 18 have been taken into custody. Complaint has been registered against BJP MLA Raju Gowda and Congress ticket aspirant Raja Venka Venkatappa Nayak. Over 30 vehicles have also been damaged. An FIR has been registered against Karnataka Chief Minister Basavaraja Baumai's political secretary MP Renukacharya for violating the Model Code of Conduct, which is in place following the announcement of the Election Commission of India for the Karnataka State Assembly elections. 
एम पी चीफ मिनिस्टर शिवराज सिंह चौहान लैस्ट आउट एट कांग्रेस लीडर कमलनाथ ओवर द लैटर्स रिमार्क वाइल अटेंडिंग एन इफ्तार पार्टी इन द स्टेट द सी एम कॉल नाथ रिमार्क चीफ एंड एन अटेम्प टू पोलराइज द वोटर्स इन द स्टेट Hitting back at Union Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya and former Congress leader Gulab Nabi Azad for targeting Rahul Gandhi, Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot said no one had thought that the duo would start speaking at such a low level and use such a low level language against the Gandhi side. He said he also went on to say that the BJP leaders are tired because Gandhi has not shied away from raising the voice of people despite so many attacks. In a major setback to Congress sources say that former Punjab Chief Minister Charanjit Singh Channi is likely to join the Bharatiya Janata Party today Charanjit Singh Channi served as the 16th Chief Minister of Punjab from 20th of September 2021 to March 16 2022 after replacing Captain Amrinder Singh for the post The Punjab police have requested the public to refrain from believing rumors and fake news about the surrender of Waris the Punjab chief and radical preacher Amritpal Singh. The Punjab police declared it to be a fake news and incorrect. Union Health Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia held a key review meeting with the health ministers of all states and union territories on Friday amid the uptick in COVID-19 cases in the country. India has logged 6050 fresh coronavirus cases while the active cases have increased to 28303 according to the latest update the death toll has increased to 5 lakh has increased to uh, 14 deaths three reported from Maharashtra two each from Karnataka and Rajasthan one each from Delhi Gujarat Haryana Himachal Pradesh Jammu and Kashmir and Punjab and one was reconciled by Kerala High level security meeting uh, high level security review meeting of Jammu and Kashmir situation is also set to take place today according to sources the agenda of the meeting is to discuss the prevailing security scenario and strengthen the security grid ahead of the upcoming Amarnath Yatra sources further say that senior officials from MHA CRPF BSF Indian Army and sister intelligence agencies are set to take part in the meeting Police have arrested a 50-year-old man in Nanded district of uh, Maharashtra on charge of inciting the Muslim community youth against an upcoming rally of suspended BJP leader and Telangana MLA T Raja Singh. The rally is scheduled to be held at Biloli in Nanded on the 9th of April. Swati Maliwal, chairperson of Delhi Commission for Women, conducted a surprise check in a public toilet opposite GB Pant Hospital in Darya Ganj and seized 50 liters of acid lying in open there last night. According to sources, officials of MCD have been summoned for further inquiry. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath uh, expressed grief after three people lost their lives in a road accident in the Baharaj district. Three people on the same bike were run over by a truck near Manpur village on the Baharaj uh, Sitapur road on Thursday evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate and lay foundation stone of uh, projects worth over 11000 crore rupees in Telangana besides flagging off the Secunderabad Tirupati Vande Bharat Express tomorrow according to sources Modi will also participate in a public meeting at the parade ground Union Health Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia and MOS Health Dr Bharati Praveen Pawar took part in a walkathon starting from Vijay Chowk to Nirman Bhavan in Delhi on the occasion of World Health Day. Late Jharkhand Education Minister Jagannath Mahato's last rites were performed on Friday after his mortal remains were brought to the Jharkhand Mukti Morcha office in Bokaro. Chief Minister Hemant Sorain, Assembly Speaker Rabindranath Mahato along with other MLAs paid their respects. Addressing the Dalit Convention in Uttar Pradesh's Kashambi, Union Home Minister Amit Shah slammed Rahul Gandhi and said that Rahul Gandhi tried to tarnish the image of India on foreign soil. The International Monetary Fund chief said the world economy is expected to grow less than 3% this year, down from 3.4% last year, increasing the risk of hunger and poverty globally, with India and China expected to account for half of global growth in 2023. Ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Chennai, Congress leader and MLA Selva Perundagai took to Twitter to announce that the Black 
flag will be brandished in the state to protest against the disqualification of Congress leader Rahul Gandhi. In a massive action against former Maharashtra Cabinet Minister Aslam Sheikh, Brihana Mumbai, Mumbai Municipal Corporation or the BMC demolished Sheikh's what they called illegally built film studios in the Mud Marve area of Mumbai. Pakistan's Minister of State for Petroleum, Musadik Malik, said that they cannot give a 24-7 gas supply to the masses. Pakistan is highly dependent on natural gas for energy and with the rising demand and insufficient supply, low trading in the country has become a daily occurrence. The situation worsened during Ramadan as the masses need gas for cooking and other reasons, especially during Sehri and Iftar timings. The World Bank has said that various economic shocks have resulted in nearly 4 million Pakistanis getting pushed into poverty this fiscal year. The World Bank also called on Pakistan to immediately arrange for new foreign loans to avoid a public debt crisis. China announced sanctions Friday against two Asia-based organizations and Taiwan's representative in the U.S. in response to the closely watched meeting this week between the U.S. House Speaker and Taiwan's President. China had vowed countermeasures against Taipei for its interactions with the U.S. Dozens of Uyghurs and uh, American supporters led by the East Turkestan government in uh, exile and East Tur Turkestan national movement gathered in front of the U.S. Capitol building to commemorate the 33rd anniversary of the 1990 East Turkestan uprising on the 5th of April. They urged the United States Congress to introduce and pass legislation recognizing East Turkestan as an occupied territory. Israel struck targets in southern Lebanon early Friday and resumed airstrikes in the Gaza Strip, the Israeli military said, marking a further escalation in the region following violence this week at Jerusalem's most sensitive holy site. The military said it targeted installations of the Palestinian militant group Hamas in southern Lebanon. Israel resumed airstrikes in the Gaza Strip and struck targets in, the, in southern Lebanon early today, marking a further escalation in the region following violence this week at Jerusalem's most sensitive holy site. The military said it targeted installations of the Palestinian militant group Hamas in southern Lebanon. Israel's missile defense system was activated in the southern city of Derod uh, early in this morning as sirens warned of incoming rockets from Gaza Strip. Israel has been using the Iron Dome system to intercept the rockets behind being fired in its territory. Thousands of people on Thursday took to the streets of Chilean capital Santiago in support of the police force, which had a third officer killed in the past months. Demonstrators are blaming the violence against the police force to the current government, which held constant protests while being the, in the opposition. Dozens of firefighters battled a huge blaze in Mexico City's sprawling wholesale market without any reported injuries. Fire started in an area of the market where wooden pallets and crates are built and stored, meaning there was substantial fuel on a breezy evening. An unused light boat, a door and other fragments believed to be from a Japanese army helicopter were found after the Black Hawk carrying 10 crew members was presumed to have crashed at sea. Defence Minister Yasuka Zuhamada told the reporters that none of the missing crew members have been found as the surge continues. All right, uh, news from sports now. Superb performance by Kolkata Knight Riders. Spinners led by Varun Chakravarti and debutant Suya Sharma helped the home side clinch win over Royal Challengers Bangalore in the IPL match at Eden Gardens on Thursday. Kolkata Knight Riders defied the odds in the first innings with a memorable 103-run partnership between Shadul Thakur and Rinku Singh at Eden Gardens in the IPL 2023. KKR skipper Nitish Rana said that they showed great fight during the game against the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Meanwhile, the RCB lost the battle with the bat as well as uh, the ball against uh, Kolkata Knight Riders on Thursday at Eden Gardens. RCB skipper Faf Duplessy said that their batting was very average and they need to ensure that they get close to the target next time. 
Rohit Sharma will get his act together both as a batter as well as skipper when his star studded Mumbai Indians take on Mahendra Singh Dhoni's Chennai Super Kings in what could be safely billed as Saturday night IPL blockbuster. Senior Vice President Kalikesh Narayan Singh Dev took charge as National Rifle Association of India President after incumbent Raninder Singh went on a prolonged leave. The Sports Ministry had issued a directive that uh, heads of national sports federations cannot hold office for more than 12 years as per the National Sports Court, following which Raninder, who was re elected NRAI President in September 2021, went on leave. Pakistan have decided to replace Bisma Maharoof, who stepped down from the role of captaincy after the ICC Women's T20 World Cup. Bisma has been replaced by veteran all-rounder Nida Dar. Having played 130 T20 internationals and 99 ODIs, Nida is one of the most experienced players in Pakistan's camp and is the leading wicket-taker in women's T20 internationals. Top-seeded Jessica Pegula lost 10 straight games and trailed in the final set before rallying. She reached the Charleston Open quarterfinals. Pegula, ranked number three in the world, led the top four seeds, including number four seed and defending champion Belinda Bencic, into the round of eight in this season's first clay court tournament. Alejandro Davidovich Fokina beats uh, Luca in the second round in Estoril on Wednesday. Davidovich Fokina will try to keep the momentum against Marco Cecinato in the quarterfinals next. Speculations regarding Lionel Messi's uh, future may finally be coming to an end as the ace Argentine fo footballer reportedly has been made an offer like never before. Saudi Arabia's Al Hilal club has offered Messi 400 million euros per season to join the Saudi state run club. The offer is double the amount Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo is being paid by Al Nasser. England defeated Brazil in a dramatic penalty shootout to win the first ever women's finalissima at a packed Wembley on Thursday with Euro 2022 hero Chloe Kelly who scored the winning spot kick after a draw. Thirteen thousand placements last year at Amity. We are committed to nurturing passionate, hard-working and proactive professionals. How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water. And this is a great success and I would like us to work more closely on that. In regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been two different FIRs, one being in the uh, Karimnagar jurisdiction and the another FIR which was filed is under Varangal jurisdiction. The legal cell of Bharatiya Janata Party and the Bandi Sanjay's team says that the manner in which Bandi Sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the Supreme Court guidelines. On that line, uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the High Court and there's a bail petition which is filed in Varangal Court. So we'll have to wait and watch for further developments. India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first.
when we see that the masterminds the plotters of this attack are are still unpunished they are still roaming free what can india and its when we see that the masterminds the plotters of this attack are are still unpunished they are still roaming free what can india and israel do together to ensure that the plotters the mastermind of this attack are punished everyone that took part of the terror attacks pays the price a very heavy price so we are still waiting for those who committed those who sent those who operated those terror attacks to be brought to justice and indeed we need to bring very serious pressure from all the world from all the free world who stands against terrorism Welcome back. Congress leader and former cabinet minister Aslam Sheikh is facing demolition. His illegal studios facing action by the BMC after the orders of Maharashtra government. BMC and district magistrate have been ordered to take strict action against these illegal studios. Here's a report. Kirit Somaya, the BJP leader, had filed a complaint uh, to Environment Ministry of Maharashtra, claiming that uh, uh, the studios made by uh, uh, and operated by Aslam Sheikh and his uh, associates uh, are illegal at Malad Marve. Uh, in 2019, there was nothing on the uh, Malad Marve uh, coastal uh, area, and in fact, that studio was raised in 2021, and in fact, which violated the norms of. Uh, uh, coastal regulatory uh, zone following which a complaint was in fact filed by uh, kirit somaya and uh, environment ministry of maharashtra had ordered bmc and the district magistrate to take uh, actions uh, over this uh, uh, studio in fact uh, as far as the property cost is concerned uh, it cost around 1000 uh, crore that is what we've been uh, told and in fact uh, after the ministry's order now the bmc and uh, bmc and in fact the local authorities seems to uh, get in action इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेटेस्ट एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज Mediation will work when there is uncertainty of winning by any one party. इसलिए जो जजमेंट आया यही सबसे उत्तम है. This puts an end to the whole issue. Assertive one percent that wants to open the wounds again. They do not operate only by the verdict of the court. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, "Hey, I have come to inspect you," without the system approving it. सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी हमने भी ठान लिया है हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? The major problem here in India, and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, 
uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to Mr. Ohana, you as a speaker of Knesset, how do you see upholding the democracy? And I'm not, I'm talking at a time when uh, there have been protests and in fact, the issues between the two countries are sort of on the same level. We want Israel to be a better democracy, which means more decisions should be taken by the public through their representative. And unfortunately, we have an unbalanced situation and we are trying to balance it. As you mentioned, it is a matter of dispute and we have protests as we have in democracies. A very good afternoon and thank you for staying with us on Republic. I'm Deepthi Sachdeva. And ladies and gentlemen, before we deep dive into the new cycle ahead, let's also tell you what we are building towards. A lot of you have been asking about the Republic Summit, so here it is. This is India's biggest news event that is back. The third edition of the Republic Summit is going to be held in the national capital later this month. Now what you'll see here, the biggest names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change, transformation all in the country will be live at the republic summit once again this year so stand by for what will be by far india's biggest news event by miles and we look forward to your continuous patronage as always on republic let's get kick started with our headlines at this hour Vadra Congress wipeout continues 24 hours after Anil Antony, Kiran Kumar Reddy has dumped the party. He now has joined the BJP. Over 6,000 cases in the last 24 hours, the Union Health Minister holds a COVID review meet with the other state health ministers. Enforcement Directorate arrests the kingpin, KT Ramis. This is in the Kerala gold smuggling case. Battle for Karnataka heating up. Bomai and his team is in the national capital to chalk out their strategy. Purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest, unfortunate police firing. There is a Tamil Nadu governor sparking that huge controversy he claims foreign link to the Sterlite protest that we saw in 2018. The DMK is hitting right back. The Telangana BJP chief receives a grand welcome. He later holds a mega rally. This is a show of strength after having been released from jail. We've come across first up to these live images. Uh, you will see the Union Home Minister Amit Shah along with the Chief Minister of uh, Uttar Pradesh, Yogi Adityanath, meeting with classical singers. We've also earlier heard from Amit Shah who was speaking at an event and he again did rake up the issue of uh, how the previous governments 
and their attitude has been towards not just the minorities, the artists and much more. And right now they are meeting with classical singers is what we are given to understand. Our next breaking update is coming in the state of Karnataka where the Congress is making the Muslim quota the number one issue saying that if voted to power, they will restore the Muslim quota. Any complication we have given first two lists. BJP could not raise its list yet. But I am confident we will have a, a government with our own and uh, there is no internal problems in any of the planets. Some of them are the aspiring, but still I will say all those uh, issues. Karnataka, see, Karnataka after BJP government took away the 4% reservation whatever they had for minorities. No one will look at all this issue. The only issue will be defeating the BJP. So they all will support the Congress Party minorities. We will also stand by them. As soon as our government comes, we will whatever will cancel that whatever reservation issue and we will protect the minority interest. So you've just heard that reaction from D.K. Shiv Kumar of the Congress. I'm also told Prajwal is joining us live uh, with more details. Prajwal, not the very first time that you're hearing the Congress, uh, whether it is Sidharamaya earlier or D.K. Shiv Kumar now, both have reiterated that, uh, you know, we'll get that quota back once the Congress is um, in power. They're assuming that they will be in power soon. Now, coming so close to, you know, the elections right now, we are just, I think, about 34 days away from the big polling day. How could this issue really pan out? And, you know, again, the question that will be asked of the Congress, do you believe that minorities is just a vote bank, Prajwal, that can be manipulated? And can you really have reservation on the basis of religion? Uh, you know, now, first and foremost, uh, Deepthi, if you're taking, uh, looking at uh, from a law perspective or else a technical perspective, reservation has always been done on the basis of classes. It has never been done on the basis of religion. And uh, this is something which has now and again been uh, reported. It has now and again been stressed upon, stating that uh, reservation will be based uh, basically on classes and it will be given to people as well. Because first and foremost, when the internal reservation came among the scheduled caste itself, where reservation was increased to 17% but then they also made sure, the government made sure that the SC left uh, will be given a reservation of 6%, SC right will be given a reservation of 5.5% and uh, also the uh, the touchables will be given 3.5% and the others will be given 1% quota as well. Because this is basically being done to go ahead and look at the larger perspective where there are hundreds of communities who will be coming under one category so that it will help to make sure that there is certain slabs where they can go ahead and get job opportunities as well as educational opportunities. This was also mentioned in the report uh, as well, which was submitted to okay. the government of Karnataka. After which, the government also did send a proposal to the centre seeking protection for uh, uh, see, uh, seeking a protection under Schedule 9 for this because the reservation in Karnataka has now increased from 50% to 56%. But technically now, the Congress putting uh, the, you know, mm -hmm. scrapping, uh, the Congress protesting uh, against the scrapping uh, of reservation for the minorities in itself is turned out to be a huge headache for them again because now 2% of the reservation has been given to the Vakkaligas and 2% of the reservation has been given to the Lingayats. So once the reservation has already exceeded beyond 50% okay. in the state of Karnataka how can they even go ahead and bring in back the 4% reservation is something that needs to be seen and even if the Congress does manage to bring it will mm. they go on to antagonize the Vakkaligas and the Lingayats is also something which will be watched out for Deepthi.
All right, uh, Prajwal, you know, it'll be important to see whether people, you know, whether Kandadigas will actually vote on the basis of these promises that are being made by a particular political party or they'll have to read the writing on the wall. We leave it there and we trust you to keep us ahead on every breaking development. This is the big election season. Public, as always, your election news headquarters. And from the state of Karnataka, we are shifting our focus to the state of Punjab. Now, there is something very, very fascinating, possibly, that could be on the cards. After the former Chief Minister, Charanjit Singh Chani, failed to secure the Congress's ticket from Jalandhar Lok Sabha by-election, that, remember, are due, they are just around the corner, there is a lot of buzz that the former Chief Minister could be joining the BJP. You heard that right. Will Charanjit Singh Chani Ditch the Congress, join the BJP. Amandeep, getting you more. Amid reports that uh, former Chief Minister of Punjab Charanjit Singh Channi might leave Congress and join BJP. Last night, in, in fact late evening, uh, Shashi Thrur, senior Congress leader, met Charanjit Singh Channi at his residence in Kharad. They have the healthy discussions and later on, uh, Shashi Thrur has also met the family of Charanjit Singh Channi. And this meeting held just after certain uncertain uh, information uh, regarding that Channi might leave Congress and may join BJP. This information was taking round from yesterday morning and in fact, by late evening, Shashi Tharoor gave a call to Channi and met him at his residence. There are certain indications that Congress is in a worrisome situation that how their senior leader, their own selected person as a chief minister after Captain Amrinder Singh now in a very uncertain situation just because after the assembly polls of Punjab, Charanjit Singh Channi remained missing in the entire scene of the Congress. Though Raja Vading, Punjab Congress chief remain in the forefront leading the Congress party, leader of opposition Pratap Singh Bajwa remain in the pictures, but not Charanjit Singh Channi. More stories in brief right now. In a second straight setback to the Congress, the former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister in Kiran Kumar Reddy has now joined the BJP. He, remember, served as the last Chief Minister for the undivided state of Andhra Pradesh. And this is coming just today after the former Defence Minister A.K. Antony's son, Anil, also joined the BJP. I am really motivated, sir, the Honourable Prime Minister. We worked as CMs for some time. We used to meet in meetings. And his commitment towards anti-corruption, not only then, from then it started and till now it is going more and more corruption, uh, uh, less uh, corruption has to be reduced in the country. So, under their leadership, I would like to join the party and whatever is assigned to me, I will surely work for the upliftment of the BJP. Now, you would recall uh, that uh, India of late has seen a sudden spur again uh, in the COVID cases. There are about 3,000 COVID cases recorded in Delhi in just the past one week. The tally of active cases has increased by over 121% during the same period. Also, you would recall the Union Health Minister, Mansuk Mandavia earlier, has held a critical meeting with different state health ministers trying to understand their levels of preparedness. So you're looking at those images, in fact, on your screens only. That is coming in uh, from the Nirman Bhavan where you had the Ministry of Health in conversation with different state health ministers. In the last 24 hours or so, there have been 6,000 cases reported across the country. The health ministers chairing their all-important meeting. The states have all been put on a high alert amidst their entire spike in the cases. Um, though the agencies and Officials, remember, maintain that there is nothing to panic and one must resort uh, to proper testing, surveillance and genome sequencing to understand whether this could be a new variant causing a spot or not. But for the moment, uh, there is a word of caution and alert that has been sounded by the health ministry.
Sharuk Saifi who is accused in the Kerala train mishap case has now been sent to 14 days judicial custody by the judicial magistrate of Kodikode and we hear that since his medical condition is really worse he will be uh, un- in the hospital premises admitted under the supervision of the government medical college hospital Kodikode doctors as well as the po- judicial authorities who will be also being there right now as we speak a medical council a medical committee from the government medical college hospital kodi kodi is uh, in the hospital checking for his vitals and other uh, medical reports and deciding upon whether he should be discharged to and sent to the jail or will he be staying at the hospital premises throughout his entire 14 day custody that the judicial magistrate has now announced and we also are picking up from sources that the police will not be able to take the custody of uh, uh, sharuk saifi during uh, this uh, 14 day is uh, because of his health conditions but uh, once his health conditions improve the kerala police will be able to take him under their custody for further investigation in this matter because a lot of questions are still unanswered this is vashni ramu along with camera person nanda from trivandrum for republic tv now let's shift our focus uh, to get you more insight happening in the state of kerala uh, karnataka in fact pardon me now in karnataka you're looking at the elections that are just around the corner you're looking at almost all political parties talking of the issues that are important to them and also a lot of star power that people are talking about this election season after shivamogga based advocates letter now the jds has written to the election commission and they are seeking a ban on the screening of movies shows and advertisements featuring kicha sudhi until they say elections are over now why exactly because you would recall that he has pledged his total support for basavraj bomai we've seen that big press conference just about 48 hours earlier and it was the congress initially that was raising concerns about why advertisements and movies of the actor should still be allowed to be watched in the state of karnataka because of the model code of conduct that is in place and um, we have uh, mr sriram who's a political analyst live with us from chennai this afternoon along with dr suman c raman who's a political analyst also on the broadcast from chennai as i say good afternoon to both of them um, suman i want to take the first question to you Are you for a ban or you're against the ban? Look, it's not about me being for or against a ban. It is what the rules originally mm. used to say that if somebody was associated with a political party and was actively campaigning, then their uh, mm. you know uh, photographs or their movies should not be used until the elections are over. Mm. Now, this used to be the rule for many many years. now of course it has become meaningless because even private channels have come in the good old days i remember the moment uh, you know i remember mass mm. huge film stars like uh, the of the likes of even mgr and uh, uh, you know ntr and so on uh, once the elections were announced their mm. uh, movies would not be screened on any uh, official uh, government channels and so on of course today a lot of that is meaningless because uh, of the explosion of private uh, channels private social media uh, platforms and so on so i don't think even if the congress wants some kind mm. of a ban it's not going to work on the ground but uh, those used to be the rules i mean i okay. i remember very clearly for uh, many decades those used to be the rules in any election mm. now of course i think that it has become meaningless so uh, i think they're just making a point just to say that look it won't be fair if his movies are continuously being screened because it is for all practical purposes support uh, offering a But kind of you know, a platform Sumant, for the bjp suman suman you, you know what you're speaking on what you're speaking on is a different point whether that ban at all is going to be meaningless in today's day and time or not but but you know it's also our positions that political parties take mr sriram because what about uh, you know the son of uh, mr kumar swami what about nikhil kumar swami he's an actor and uh, you know haven't we seen him campaigning haven't we seen his movies and the other endorsements that have been visible on television and elsewhere during an election season i mean uh, mr sridhar what, what possibly could be the premise of any political party to call for a ban on an actor and his work during the election season unless unless they are rattled uh, is that for me Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely, I, I. They are rattled. Obviously, so Sudeep enjoys a massive uh, 
uh, with the people of Karnataka. Uh, they are kind of uh, rattled, so that's the only reason on which they would like to stall uh, stall mm. at, uh, the mileage that can go to BJP. Everyone has the will or the right to support or an individual that they think that they would want to. I mean, we have seen cricketers in the past uh, these parties, so where the actors from the Bollywood, from all the woods, they have been supporting where mm-hmm. they think they would want to support. So why would the rule come only to Sudhir Kucha mm-hmm. just because he's, you know, he's backing Mr. Bhumai? This is um, the, a knee-jerk reaction is what I could Congress and JDS. Okay, you believe this is a knee-jerk reaction from both the Congress and the JDS. Dr. Suman, now why don't you weigh in on, you know, what we see political parties usually do, you know, saying and doing during election seasons. Because just the other day, there were also pictures of DK Shiv Kumar with the actor. Now, this is another story that that relationship did not fructify and he is today not campaigning for the Congress, but he decides to campaign for the BJP instead. Now, what did the Congress say, Suman? They said, oh God, you know, this is star power that the BJP needs desperately. And, you know, this won't help because Kannadigas will have other issues on top of their mind when they go to vote. So if that is the case, why to, you know, have a problem with any actor who possibly is endorsing a chief minister or, you know, he's saying in personal capacity, I'm going to be out there campaigning. Is this really such a big deal? What about if this move backfires, this demand backfires, Sumit? No, it's uh, the demand is unlikely to backfire. It's unlikely to be effective, as I already told you. But uh, mm-hmm. let's face it, the photographs with Mr. D.K. Sukumar okay. were before uh, Mr. Sudeep announced that he would be campaigning for the BJP. So there's no issue of linking that to um, uh, any political propaganda. The point really is that, you know, uh, Mr. Sudeep has now thrown in his lot with a particular political party. So therefore, and being a Mm-hmm. huge star in Karnataka. He's, I mean, I don't think it is even uh, fair or logical to equate uh, the stardom of Sudeep with uh, uh, Nikhil Kumarasamy. So I think that you have to understand that uh, being such a huge star, naturally the Congress party is justified in, uh, in, in feeling anxious about it. Though, obviously, I don't believe that, uh, that movie stars can swing elections anymore. At the most, you know, maybe in a couple of uh, seats here and there. But beyond that, I don't think uh, a movie star can swing mm. a statewide election. But as an opposition party, I think the Congress and the JDS have got a <coughs> genuine reason to say that this should not be, I mean, that uh, publicity mm. to him through his films or whatever, she can be held back for a period of 30 days. Mm. But it's not going to work on the ground for sure. But they are justified in asking that. Okay, but but you do concede that this could have actually got both the JDS and the Congress anxious. Uh, Mr. Sriram, I would have loved to come to you, sir, but we've completely run out of time. But we look forward to talking to both of you gentlemen again now through this evening and the next 34 days. We are exactly 34 days away from the big Karnataka elections. Thank you to both Sumant and Mr. Sriram. On the other side, we are back with lots more as always. Republic will be your election news headquarters. We are getting more election-related news and other stories after this quick break. A high-level security review meeting on the prevailing security scenario in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will take place today late afternoon. The meeting will be chaired by the officials from the Ministry of Home Affairs in which the top brass of Jammu and Kashmir Police, the Border Security Force, Indian Army, CRPF and other intelligence agencies, those who have been part of the security grid will be taking part in this meeting. Important to mention that this meeting will take place in the uh, Kashmir Valley in which uh, the DGP and and both the ADGs of the Jammu as well as the Kashmir zone, they will be putting forth a thorough plan for the upcoming Amarnath Yatra as it is going to be really very crucial. So does the threat perception that remains and also the recent incidents that have taken place including the multiple attempts from Pakistan to push narcotics weapons into the Indian territory and also the Dhangri terror attack, the perpetrators of which are still at large will be discussed. With Sarjeevan Kumar, Gursimran Singh for Public Media Network. When we see that the masterminds, the plotters of this attack are, are still unpunished, they are still roaming free. What can India and Israel do together to ensure that the plotters, the mastermind of this attack are punished? Everyone that took part of the terror attacks pays the price, a very heavy price. 
So we are still waiting for those who committed, those who sent, those who operated those terror attacks to be brought to justice. And indeed, we need to bring very serious pressure from all the world, from all the free world, who stands against terrorism. The India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first. When we see that the masterminds, the plotters of this attack are, are still unpunished, they are still roaming free, what can India and Israel do together to ensure that the plotters, the mastermind of this attack are punished? Everyone that took part of the terror attacks pays the price, a very heavy price. So we are still waiting for those who committed, those who sent, those who operated those terror attacks to be brought to justice and indeed we need to bring very serious pressure from all the world, from all the free world who stands against terrorism. इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से इन डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेट अस एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज Mediation will work when there is uncertainty of winning by any one party. This is the judgment that this puts an end to the whole issue. Assertive 1% that wants to open the wounds again, they do not operate only by the verdict of the court. सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी हमने भी ठान लिया है हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेटेस्ट एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज
everyone, a very warm welcome. You're watching live and breaking with me, Raksha Mishra. Let's get you all the top stories that are making headlines at this hour. Vardha Congress wipeout continues 24 hours after Anil Anthony Kiran Kumar Reddy dumps the party, joins the BJP. Over 6,000 cases in last... Over 6,000 cases in the last 24 hours, Union Health Minister holds COVID review meeting with other state health ministers. Enforcement director arrests King Ping, KT Ramiz in Kerala gold smuggling case. Battle for Karnataka heats up. Bombay and team in the national capital to talk out the strategy. Purely foreign funded entire activities which led to the protest, unfortunate police firing. Tamil Nadu Governor Sparks controversy claims foreign link to Sterlite protest. DMK hits out. And Telangana BJP chief receives grand welcome, holds mega rally in a show of strength after being released from jail. All right, before we start, ladies and gentlemen, let us tell you that India's biggest news event is back. The third edition of the Republic Summit will be held in the national capital this month. The biggest names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change and transformation in India will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. All right, now let's uh, get you the latest on uh, what the IIT ministry has notified. Uh, New IT rules have been notified that form rules and announces uh, formation of a new fact-checking unit. This move has been criticized by the Editors Guild of India that claims government could get sweeping powers. Republic TV spoke to Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar on the new rules. Rajiv sir, thanks for speaking to Republic. Sir, now the new amendment has been made to the IT IT rule mm -hmm. to, uh, to to see the misinformation and misleading content. Could you explain more what the change in the leg legislation exactly is? Uh, look, uh, in October of 2022, we had formulated and notified a new IT rules that takes on this danger and this menace of misinformation and patently false information on the internet head-on. And in to, uh, October 2022, we had prescribed in Rule 31B5 of the IT rules that social media platforms and intermediaries have an obligation to take down fake information and patently false information. Amongst other, other eight categories of uh, content, including child sexual abuse material, religious incitement material, there were nine categories of content that were no-go areas for social media platforms and this was notified in October 2022. One of the issues that came up during the last uh, 10 months, 12 months was that <clears throat> many intermediaries felt that there was a need for a fact checker, a credible, trusted fact checker who can be playing the role of flagging uh, fake content, patently false content and misinformation content. And because the government as an entity, information about the government can only be with the government, it was felt that the government must create an entity that will fact check what are the issues out there, content out there, information about there on government, uh, uh, on government content, government related content. And so therefore we have, no, we have said in the IT rules to help the intermediaries 
discharge their obligations under rule through real rule three we will create a fact checking entity that will in a credible transparent manner fact check matters of the government not uh, as some people will try and characterize as any restriction on free speech this is certainly not uh, anything to do with uh, curbing editorial or content creation this is an un a uh, wavering commitment to making sure the internet in india is safe and trusted we certainly don't want misinformation fake information and patently false information especially from cross border state actors and vested interests to create dissonance create chaos and create any uh, challenges to the indian democracy or indeed the safety and trust of the indian internet one more thing mr chandrashekhar uh, how will the body work to fight this misinformation and right now you have given the entire power to pib to take down the any any force of fake content from social media are there any plans in your mind which organization it will be which particular body it will be i want to certainly clarify to you that the rules that were notified yesterday do not say pib uh, we do not uh, mention that pib will be the fact checking unit so the rules say that the government of india i.e. the meti this ministry will notify an institution that will be the fact checker for the government now there are many ways of looking at that institution but i can certainly commit to through you to the viewers that this fact checking unit will be a fact checking unit that will do its work credibly transparently and will will earn the trust of those it is fact checking which is the social media intermediaries it is our commitment that this will be an institution that will be built that will be creating trust and credibility among the social media intermediaries who will be the most uh, availing uh, entities of this fact checking unit does not ask anybody to take down content it will only point out that this is misinformation or this is patently false information it is left to the social media intermediaries to either take it down or if they choose to keep something that is fake or keep that as misinformation they essentially have only one consequence which is that the safe harbor under section 79 that protects them from any legal cases will will be dropped and then they will be in a legal dispute with whoever is aggrieved by the uh, fake information or patently false information so the safe harbor and the immunity that they enjoy from having a legal case put on them for fake information or misinformation will cert will will be dropped and they will be in a in a dispute legal dispute in a court of law between the person who is aggrieved by the fake information and the platform that is carrying the fake information that is the only consequence that comes out of it there is no power in the government of india under these rules to take down content we can only flag misinformation we can only flag patently false information through this entity it is up to the intermediary to decide take it down or yeah or take it down or not I mean, the uh, people will say what they have to say, that, but we have done everything that we, our government does, everything our ministry does, is done with extensive consultation. It is done with extensive legal consultation. It is done with extensive consultation with stakeholders, including users, and intermediaries, and industry, and other stakeholders. So, therefore, there is no question of anything being unconstitutional. This is. uh usually being pandered by those who are in election mode and those who want to create politics out of everything uh this is an important step and a decisive step as in october 2022 to make the indian internet fight the scourge of misinformation fight the scourge of uh, uh, patently false information in a manner where every one of our 100 crore digital nagriks will enjoy an internet can trust the internet and trust the information that is put on the internet uh, i i usually do not respond to the congress because there is not very much that they say that is worth responding to but i can certainly say that the congress which is the pioneer for section 66a in the it act which had to be struck down by a supreme court when i was a member of parliament 
which is a pioneer of using the law to imprison cartoonists, should not open their mouth about anything to do with this, because what this government does is for the safety and trust of a hundred crore digital nagrics. Our fight to keep the internet safe and trusted will be unwavering. Our fight to keep misinformation and fake information out of the internet is unwavering, and this fight is does not represent any threat. to every citizen's right to free speech every everybody every indian's right to free speech and i want to clarify through your to your viewers that this is the first government that in the rules have enshrined that no platform can violate the fundamental right of any indian citizen article 14 19 or 21 this is written in the rules that article 14 19 and 21 cannot be violated of indian citizens so this government is a trustee of indians fundamental rights and certainly will not play havoc with fundamental rights that the congress has during the emergency or with section 66a so that was republic tv's exclusive conversation with union minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar and this of course viewers is a fight against fake news and we will get you all the developments and all the updates on that story but now it's time to take a quick look at all the other stories that are making news at this point in time In a second straight setback to Congress, former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Kiran Kumar Reddy has joined the BJP. Reddy, who served as the last Chief Minister for undivided Andhra Pradesh, joined BJP at a function organised at the party headquarters. This comes a day after former Defence Minister A. K. Antony's son Anil Antony joined the BJP in Delhi. I am really motivated, sir, the Honourable Prime Minister. we worked as cms for some time we used to meet in meetings and his commitment towards anti corruption not only then from then it started and till now it is going more and more corruption uh, uh, less uh, corruption has to be reduced in the country so under their leadership i would like to join the party and whatever is assigned to me i will surely work for the upliftment of the bjp reacting to the development congress hit out at the leaders quitting the party congress leader had said that those who all are joining the bjp are gaddars commenting on anil antony adiranjan choudhury said that he will have to live like a servant in the party also alleging that bjp has lured him ye koi एंटोनी जी एंटोनी जी उनका बेटा उपाधि टाइटल सरनेम तो एंटोनी हो सकता लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि वो एंटोनी है तो मुझे लगता है वो जहां भी जाए हुआ नौकर चाकर बन के रहना पड़ेगा और किरण रेड्डी साहब उनको ये लगा कि और उनको उम्मीद बचे नहीं है Daily COVID cases crossed 6,000 mark on Friday. Union Health Minister held a COVID review meeting with the health ministers of all states. Delhi reported over 600 cases, highest since last August. Meanwhile, states are also issuing fresh guidelines. The Enforcement Directorate has arrested the kingpin of the Kerala gold smuggling case, K.T. Ramis, on Friday. According to the probe agency, Ramis was the facilitator of the scam and was said to be in direct touch with the investors. The National Investigating Agency, in a report, mentioned that K.T. Ramis was the facilitator of the scam. NIA also said that K.T. Ramis was the key link in diverting proceeds of smuggling to fund anti-national activities in South India. In a mega show of strength, Telangana BJP President Bandi Sanjay held a held rally in Karim Nagar. BJP MP from Karim Nagar, Bandi Sanjay Kumar, said that BJP would hoist party's uh, flag in the state after assembly elections this year. The BJP Telangana chief was released from Karim Nagar jail on Friday after he was granted bail in the SSC paper leak case. He slammed the KCR government and challenged the state government to investigate the SSC paper leak matter with a sitting judge.
Clashes continued for a second day between the workers of BJP and Congress in Yadgir, Karnataka. Section 144 has been imposed in Surapura constituency after 10 people were injured. More than 30 vehicles have been damaged in the violence. 18 people have been detained. A complaint has been lodged against BJP MLA Raju Gowda and Congress ticket aspirant Raja Venkatapa Nayak. Money laundering accused Sukesh Chandrasekhar, who is facing multiple charges, has levelled serious allegations against Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. He has accused him of having a nexus with the South Group and BRS party. Sukesh claimed that uh, screenshots of chats between him and Kejriwal show Kejriwal's instructions regarding the delivery of 15 crore rupees to the TRS office and also showed the token of acceptance and confirmation from the TRS leader. He also said that he is ready to undergo narco analysis test. In an action against Maharashtra Congress leader and ex-cabinet minister Aslam Sheikh, bulldozers were rolled over the illegal studios belonging to him in Mumbai. The value of these studios is around 1,000 crore rupees. The action was initiated by BMC after the orders of Maharashtra government. Union Home Minister Amit Shah hit out at Rahul Gandhi. Amit Shah questioned Congress leader whether commenting on Indian democracy abroad was needed. He also hit out at the opposition saying that for the first time there could not be any discussion in the parliament. Amit Shah said that not democracy but the Congress family is under threat in reality. What is All right, some big begging news coming in at this point in time, but uh, a murder case has been registered against the accused by Kerala police in connection with Kerala train attack case. Meanwhile, a local court on Friday remanded the accused to 14 days judicial custody. The accused Shah Rukh Saifi was admitted to the medical college for a treating injury suspected to have been caused during his escape after he poured petrol on some passengers on board the train and set them on fire. All right, we're getting in some breaking news after two leaders from the Congress party joined the BJP in the last 24 hours. There seems to be chaos in the Congress. A Congress leader has now said that the party must introspect on why so many leaders are in fact deserting the party. This is of course a matter of introspection as far as the Congress is concerned because we have seen today itself that back-to-back -back setbacks, back-to-back -back setbacks for the Congress party today, especially down south. We've seen yesterday also uh, former Union Minister and Congress leader A.K. Anthony's son had joined the Congress Party and to, uh, had joined the BJP Party, of course, and left the Congress Party and joined the BJP. Today we are seeing, uh, of course, um, big leaders, uh, former Chief Minister of uh, Andhra Pradesh also had joined the BJP today. And those are some updates that are coming in. And now a Congress a leader has reacted. Rashid Alvi on the camera now. Let's listen into what he had to say. कांग्रेस पार्टी को विचार करना पड़ेगा जिस तरीके से यूपी के अंदर गोवा के अंदर मध्य प्रदेश के अंदर आंध्र के अंदर आसाम के अंदर केरला के अंदर हमारे लोग छोड़ छोड़ के जा रहे हैं क्या कारण है हम ये नहीं कह सकते कि जिसको जाना है जाए जिसको नहीं जाना है वो ना वो पार्टी के अंदर रहे और इससे भी बड़ा सवाल है वो सारे लोग एक दिन में अपनी आइडियोलॉजी अपनी विचार बदल के उस पार्टी के अंदर जा रहे हैं जिसकी आइडियोलॉजी बिल्कुल उल्टी है इसीलिए मैं लगातार कह रहा हूं कि कांग्रेस पार्टी में आरएसएस की विचारधारा के बहुत लोग भरे पड़े हैं यह कांग्रेस की हाई कमांड की जिम्मेदारी है कि उन्हें पॉइंट आउट करके उनको बाहर का रास्ता दिखाए इससे पहले कि वो कांग्रेस को कमजोर करें इससे पहले कि वो कांग्रेस को छोड़ के बीजेपी ज्वाइन करें ये लगातार हो रहा है 
एक दिन में आप अपनी आइडियोलॉजी कैसे चेंज कर सकते हैं और वो भी कांग्रेस की विचारधारा छोड़कर बीजेपी की विचारधारा एक ईस्ट है तो दूसरा वेस्ट है एक नॉर्थ है तो दूसरा साउथ है एक मैग्नेट का नॉर्थ है तो दूसरा साउथ है इसका मतलब है कि हमारी पार्टी के अंदर ऐसे लोगों की भरमार है और ये जिम्मेदारी हाई कमांड की है बीजेपी स्पोक्स पर्सन टॉम वराकन जॉइंस अस ऑन द फोन लाइन फॉर मोर ऑन दिस टॉम मिस्टर वराकन वी आर सीइंग दैट हाउ देयर हैज बीन अ स्पेट ऑफ रेजिग्नेशंस फ्रॉम द कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड इट्स नॉट द फर्स्ट टाइम ऑफ कोर्स बट दीस डेज वी आर सीइंग इट सीइंग हाउ बैक टू बैक कांग्रेस लीडर्स हैव बीन डिजर्टिंग द पार्टी एंड जॉइनिंग द भारतीय जनता पार्टी स्पेशली डाउन साउथ एंड वी आल्सो हैव अ कांग्रेस वॉइस नाउ हु इज सेइंग दैट इट्स टाइम टू इंट्रोस्पेक्ट नाउ योर थॉट्स ऑन दिस सर वेल आई एम हैविंग नोन राशि गांधी को क्वेश्चन टाइम He is fully aware of the whole situation. He is now giving it a cover fire by calling it IRS's ideology. It is nationalism that is at core, and the BJP is follows a nationalistic ideology. Now he also knows it, uh, and the point is he himself is very upset on this whole thing. Me, what is me? The point is it's it's like uh, you know the floodgates open because. To my knowledge, there are more, more leaders from across the different states joining the BJP. It is not about ideology. The ideology hmm. is nationalism that they are being attracted to, and the leadership of our Prime Minister, whose vision cuts across every corner of this country. Our Prime Minister has given that vision, has followed that vision, has acted on that vision. It's not just promises; he has acted on it, and that is what makes the difference. right and uh, of course this comes in uh, the run up to the karnataka election mr vadakkan and this these are very significant developments and quite denting for the congress party neither in terms of the uh, elections if we say nor in terms of the optics also especially down south uh, because the southern part of india is one place where the bjp has been of course making inroads but right now we are seeing it's actually uh, it advantage bjp if it we can call it that way how do you look at these uh, spate of resignations and now the bjp getting boost after boost in the southern states now and especially in the run up to the 2024 general elections well this is just the beginning and uh, we have the just uh, just uh, the former chief minister of andhra pradesh joining as these are not small individuals they are They are committed individuals who have thought about development of this country, development of their own state, and when there is nothing but uh, rhetoric coming in from the Congress, they realize it's time that they join the mainstream and support the BJP. And this will happen not only in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, it's happening across across all states. It has happened in northeast and other states too. So this phenomenon will continue unless Congress decides to reinvent itself, which is it's time it did. Hmm. Hmm. Right. All right, Mr. Vidakun, thank you so much for joining us with your thoughts on that story. Much appreciated your joining in here. मंच पर उपस्थित उत्तर प्रदेश के यशस्वी और लोकप्रिय मुख्यमंत्री श्रीमान योगी आदित्यनाथ जी उत्तर प्रदेश के पर्यटन और संस्कृति मंत्री भाई जयवीर सिंह जी मेरे साथ पधारे हुए उत्तर प्रदेश भारतीय जनता पार्टी के कर्मठ अध्यक्ष श्रीमान भूपेंद्र चौधरी जी श्री अनिल राजभर जी दयाशंकर सिंह जी जोर से ताली बजाइएगा आपके लोकप्रिय सांसद भाई दिनेश लाल निरुआ जी नरेंद्र सिंह जी विजय बहादुर पाठक जी उपस्थित सभी विधायक गण और आज आजमगढ़ की इस पवित्र भूमि पर इतनी बड़ी संख्या में आए हुए 
प्यारे भाइयों बहनों माताओं और मेरे जिगर के टुकड़े जैसे युवा मित्रों आप सभी को नमस्कार मित्रों आज महर्षि दुर्वासा महर्षि देवल चंद्रमा और महर्षि दत्तात्रेय की भूमि को मैं प्रणाम कर कर मेरी बात की शुरुआत करना चाहता हूं आज मैं जब यहां आया हूं तब आजमगढ़ के महान स्वतंत्रता सेनानी बाबू सीताराम अस्ताना बाबू विश्राम राय डॉक्टर सूर्यनाथ सिंह श्री अंबिका सिंह श्री उदय भान सिंह श्री द्वारिका लाल श्री श्याम नारायण लाल ये सभी को श्रद्धांजलि देकर आज मैं अपनी बात की शुरुआत करना चाहता हूं और मैं आज सबसे पहले योगी जी को बधाई देना चाहता हूं जिस आजमगढ़ को पूरे देश भर में आतंक के केंद्र के रूप में माना जाता था वो आजमगढ़ की धरोहर हरिहर घराने को फिर से सम्मान देने के लिए संगीत महाविद्यालय की याद यहां नींव रखने का काम हुआ मित्रों मुझे ठीक याद है मैं गुजरात का गृह मंत्री था अहमदाबाद में बम धमाके हो गए थे और जब अहमदाबाद की पुलिस बम धमाकों के सूत्र ढूंढते ढूंढते देश भर में से आतंकियों की गिरफ्तारी कर रही थी तब उसका सबसे बड़ा सूत्रधार आजमगढ़ के अंदर से पकड़ा गया था और योगी जी ठीक ही कह रहे थे आजमगढ़ की छवि कभी ये हरिहर घराने से जानी जाती थी पंडित चन्नूलाल मिश्र जैसे गायकी के विद्वानों से जानी जाती थी वो आजमगढ़ को वो छवि को धूमिल करने का काम ये सपा बसपा बसपा सपा की सरकारों ने किया था आज मुझे आनंद आनंद है कि उसी आजमगढ़ में आज संगीत का विश्व महाविद्यालय स्थापित होने जा रहा है मित्रों हरिहर पूर्व घराना जिसके नाम में ही हरि और हर दोनों हो वो हमेशा संपूर्ण होता है और गायकी की दृष्टि से कला की दृष्टि से तीनों विधाएं गायन वादन और नृत्य तीनों विधाओं का एक जमाने में हमारा आजमगढ़ केंद्र हुआ करता था ये हरिहरपुर संगीत के घराने के पद्म विभूषण चन्नूलाल मिश्र अंबिका मिश्र डॉक्टर मनोज कुमार मिश्र ऐसे ढेर सारे राष्ट्रीय और अंतर्राष्ट्रीय ख्याति प्राप्त सभी कलाकारों को आज बहुत आनंद होगा कि इसी आजमगढ़ के अंदर संगीत का विद्यालय शुरू हो रहा है मित्रों संगीत को संभालना संस्कृति को प्राणवायु देना जैसा होता है संगीत को आगे बढ़ाना गायन वादन और नृत्य ये तीनों कलाओं को ये महाविद्यालय के अंदर आश्रय मिलेगा उसका प्रचार होगा प्रसार होगा और परंपरा से युक्त इस जिले में अनेक बच्चों को अपनी नई कैरियर बनाने का मौका मिलेगा आज पंडित रामदास मिश्र नौरतन मिश्र सावला मिश्र देवी साहब प्रसाद मिश्र गुरु सहाय मिश्र बुलबुल महाराज श्यामलाल मिश्र जोखो मिश्र चाहे गायन हो सारंगी हो तबला हो नृत्य हो हर कला को इन लोगों ने समग्र विश्व के पटल पर रखने का काम किया था आज मैं मन से योगी जी को बधाई देना चाहता हूं कि संगीत का महाविद्यालय आने वाले दिनों में न केवल उत्तर प्रदेश आने वाले दिनों में पूरे भारत का गौरव समग्र विश्व में बढ़ाएगा इसका मुझे पक्का भरोसा है 
माताओं भाइयों बहनों आज मैं जब यहां आया हूं तब मैं मुझे पहले का उत्तर प्रदेश ठीक से याद है उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर कई दिनों तक मैंने रात्रि निवास किया था चुनाव में एक भी रात ऐसी नहीं थी जहां ग्रामीण क्षेत्र में रात को बिजली मिलती हो 24 घंटा बिजली तभी मिलती Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone is, alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, "Hey, I've come to inspect you," without the system approving it. सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं प्रधानमंत्री जी हमने भी ठान लिया है हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India, and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot, and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water, and this is a great success. and i would like us to work more closely on that in regard with the paper leak issue we have been seeing how there has been two different fias one being in the uh, karimnagar jurisdiction and the another fi which was filed is under varangal jurisdiction the legal cell of bhartiya janata party and the bandi sanjay team says that the manner in which bandi sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the supreme court guidelines on that lines uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the high court and there's a bail petition which is filed in varangal court so we'll have to wait and watch for further developments India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first Breaking this Friday evening, I'm Shivangi Shukla getting you the latest. And India's biggest news event is back. The third edition of the Republic Summit will be held in the national capital this month. The biggest names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change and transformation in India will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. It's time to see what else is making the headlines. Government announces formation of fake news unit to tackle misinformation against the government. Opposition and lobby question government on anti-fake news mechanism all the uh, alleges the attack on free speech. After Vadra Congress JDS spoke by Kitcha Sudeep entry advice to EC seeking ban on his films. A Congress pulls out the minority card yet again a promise to reverse quota decision in Karnataka.
After two high-profile inductions in BJP from Congress, Congress leaders issue introspection warning to own party. And Tamil Nadu governor says 2018 sterilite protests received foreign funding, triggering a big controversy. Viewers getting some breaking news coming in. The Shiv Sena party workers are about to leave for Yodhya. The Maharashtra CM Shinde also arrived at the railway station there to uh, see them off. And Alicia is joining us live from the Mumbai newsroom. We can see that Shiv Sena workers are leaving for Yodhya. Ekna Shinde too to be in a Yodhya this Sunday, Alicia. Well, yes, Shivangi. Maharashtra Chief Minister uh, Ekna Shinde, as well as uh, all the MPs and MLAs of uh, Shiv Sena, to be uh, in Ayodhya on 9th of April. And uh, here we can see the visuals uh, from a Thane Station, where the Shiv Sena workers has uh, already left for Ayodhya from Thane Station, and itself, uh, Maharashtra Chief Minister was present to wave off all those workers who was uh, present at the station and it will be indeed a good uh, a big event uh, specifically the allegation that has also been leveled by Maharashtra Chief Minister Ekna Shinde during an interview he mentioned that when uh, uh, before when Uddhav Thakre who was the Chief Minister of Maharashtra went to Ayodhya there are some of the MLAs who came back from the airport itself and they were not even allowed to board a flight and uh, many of the MLAs and MPs were not allowed to come to Ayodhya when uh, Uddhav Thakre was present in Ayodhya after which after becoming the Chief Minister of Maharashtra where Ekna Shinde along with his MLAs and MP has decided to visit uh, Ayodhya where uh, Ekna Shinde is also going to perform Maha Aarti at Sharayu River and uh, all the MLAs and MPs are going to leave tomorrow that is on 8th of April whereas uh, Chief Minister Ekna Shinde is also going to leave with his uh, MLAs an MP as well tomorrow itself and on uh, 9th of April where uh, uh, Ekna Shinde not only going to visit the Ram temple which is the, the work is the construction work which has been underway is also going to assess the situation of the Ram temple as well but also he is going to perform a Maha Aarti on 9th of April and now we have been seeing the visuals where the workers of Shiv Sena has already left from Thane station where, uh, where Ekna Shinde was also present. All right, uh, thank you, Alicia, for getting us all the details. Alicia, getting us top details. Shisina workers are leaving for Ayodhya very soon tomorrow, like Alicia is saying. Ikma Shinde will be leaving for Ayodhya along uh, with uh, his uh, party members, and he will be performing an Arati there at the Ram Temple. All right, movie viewers, let's move ahead to the other story that we're tracking on Republic TV, the international. Uh, Monetary Fund chief said that the world economy is expected to grow less than 3% this year, down from 3.4% last year, increasing the risk of hunger and poverty globally, with India and China expected to account for half of global growth in 2023. As India moves ahead strongly with a projection of 6.5 GDP growth, the International Monetary Fund also hailed India's growth story. The IMF chief lauded India's contribution to the global growth in 2023. Uh, we do see some momentum coming from emerging market economies, especially from Asia. Uh, this year, India and China are going to deliver half of global growth. But we have quite a number of uh, economies that are facing a very uh, stiff uh, climb. Uh, economic activity is slowing down in 90% uh, of advanced economies in the US, in the Euro area, where high interest rates weight on demand. The positive remarks comes ahead of next week's spring meeting of the IMF and the World Bank where the policy makers will discuss pressing issues of global economy. Bureau Report, Republic TV. आपकी जेल की सलाखें तेलंगाना के आक्रोश और तेलंगाना के लोगों के मन में जो गरीना है आपकी जेल की दीवारें और जेल की सलाखें उसको रोक नहीं सकती 
रोक नहीं सकती रोक नहीं सकी इसलिए संजय मंडी को पकड़ना है क्योंकि वो तेलंगाना के नौजवानों की आवाज बनकर सड़कों पर आंदोलन कर रहा है लोकतांत्रिक तरीके से आंदोलन कर रहा है आप तेलंगाना के जनता की आवाज को दबाना चाह रहे हैं संजय मंडी को जेल में डालकर तेलंगाना की आवाज को जेल में डालना चाहते हैं तेलंगाना की आवाज रुकेगी नहीं तेलंगाना का आंदोलन रुकेगा नहीं तेलंगाना के नौजवानों को इंसाफ दिलाने के लिए तेलंगाना के बच्चों के भविष्य के लिए तेलंगाना के विकास के लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी का संघर्ष जारी रहेगा संजय बंडी और भारतीय जनता पार्टी का एक एक कार्यकर्ता लड़ाई लड़ता रहेगा लड़ाई लड़ता रहेगा जब तक कि तेलंगाना की जनता को इंसाफ ना मिले और मैं कहना चाहता हूं केसीआर साहब आपने पहले भी गैर जमीदराना तरीके से गैर कानूनी तरीके से गैर संविधानिक तरीके से संजय बंडी को उनके मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट कार्यालय से ग्रिले उखाड़ उखाड़ कर ऐसे जैसे रात को किसी आतंकवादी को चोर को पकड़ा जाता है ऐसे पकड़ा आप दूसरा प्रयास भी हुआ आपकी जेल की दीवारें अब तेलंगाना की आवाज को रोक नहीं सकेंगी जितनी मर्जी ऊंची दीवारें कर ले के सीआर ये आक्रोश की तूफान है तेलंगाना के अंदर तुम्हारे परिवार के खिलाफ जो आक्रोश है वो अब सुनामी में बदल चुका है ये सुनामी तुम्हारी सरकार को बहा के ले जाएगी और भारतीय जनता पार्टी इस तेलंगाना की जनता की आवाज के लिए तेलंगाना की जनता के इंसाफ के लिए लगातार संघर्ष करेगी मैं पूछना चाहता हूं केसीआर साहब ये पेपर लीकेज का माफिया ये माफिया के पीछे कौन है माफिया कौन चला रहा है माफिया के लीकेज कहां हो रही है ये लीकेज की कंपनी किसकी है ये एग्जाम का कंपनी किसके पास है उस कंपनी के सीईओ के साथ आपके परिवार के क्या संबंध है कौन है किंग पिन किससे ध्यान हटाना चाहते हो तेलंगाना की जनता का एक एक नागरिक जान चुका है कि पेपर लीकेज और ये लीकेज माफिया के पीछे आपका कटुंब काम कर रहा है दोस्ती निभाइए लेकिन ऐसे दोस्त जो तेलंगाना की जनता को तेलंगाना के नौजवानों के साथ खिलवाड़ करें आपने उनको पाल रखा उनको ठेके दे रखे लगातार पेपर लीक हो रहे हैं आपने एग्जामिनेशन की कैलकुलेशन भी नहीं होती ऐसी कंपनियों को अपने दोस्त की कंपनियों को ठेके दे रखे हैं जिनसे एग्जाम का कैलकुलेशन नहीं होता 27 स्टूडेंट्स सताइस बच्चे तेलंगाना के आत्महत्या कर चुके हैं आज उन बच्चों की आत्माएं धितकार रही आपके कुटुंब को उन बच्चों की आत्माएं धितकार रही हैं केसियर साहब आपके कुटुंब को आपके अहंकार को आपको आवाज सुनाई नहीं दे रही क्योंकि आपने सत्ता के लोभ और सत्ता की लिप्सा का all of you was uh, so this is this is the bjp news briefing which is happening right now just after just after we saw that uh, the telangana bjp chief bandi sanjay walked out of the jail and uh, uh, the bjp chief bandi sanjay also alleging conspiracy by the brs and bjp also saying there in that press conference that the bjp will keep fighting uh, for justice viewers so we're getting these back to back details coming in here on republic uh, tv and uh, we also saw we also saw that uh, bandi sanjay a short while back he's gotten bail in the ssc paper leak case so after that the bjp government heading out the bjp they heading out at the ksr government over the arrest of bandi sanjay
Viewers of Shivmoga based advocates uh, letter now the JDS has written to the EC seeking a ban on the screening of movies, shows and advertisements featuring Kitcha Sudeep until elections are over. Remember this happened after superstar Kitcha Sudeep uh, said that he will be supporting Bomai in the campaign. He did not say he will campaign for the BJP or join the party but he said he will be he will be supporting Bomai. After that, we are saying that the JDS has written to the Election Commission viewers and uh, they are seeking a ban on any content, whether it be movies, whether it be shows or advertisements featuring Kitcha Sudeep until the elections are over, viewers. So, we're getting these back-to-back -back details coming in. Remember that uh, the, the JDS writing to Election Commission seeking a ban on the screening of a uh, telecast of movie shows and commercials uh, featuring the Kannada superstar Kitcha Sudeep claiming that it might influence voters in the upcoming assembly elections. Mr. Sudeep who does a press conference along with the sitting chief minister of Karnataka and the invitation to all the media is sent on the letterhead of BJP and Mr. Sudeep really says that he is going to do whatever the uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Karnataka says and he adheres to a, a certain ideology of a political party. So he is a politician. So according to the rule and the, the law of the land, any person who has political affiliation, they cannot really uh, uh, be seen on a public platform. Uh, that's the reason we have requested the Honorable uh, Election Commission to definitely look into the matter of Sudeep's movies, OTT platforms, advertisement or any form where he is uh, uh, shown across. So Mr. Sudeep was a star, is a star and will be a star. So 40 days the sky is definitely not going to fall. For 40 days when we can really stop all the uh, uh, movies of Nikhil Kumar Swami and all the people who are uh, from political background. So does Mr. Sudeep's movies and uh, OTT platforms and advertisement definitely should be stopped till the election is over. See, he never said that I am joining BJP. He just mentioned I am going to support Chief Minister in his constituency and some, some other constituency as a celebrity. That's all. If he is join our party or if he contesting any elections, what their complaint is valuable. Otherwise, it is a stupid, stupid thing. Even in uh, um, Jantadal, JDS, himself is a, uh, what he is a candidate, Mr. Nikhil. Nikhil is a film star and he is a distributor, Mr. Uh, Kumar Swami and that family from Battleground Karnataka but from across the country. Stay tuned. Thirteen thousand placements last year. At Amity, we are committed to nurturing passionate, hardworking, and proactive professionals. How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India, and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies. Uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India and I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water and this is a great success and I would like us to work more closely on that
in regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been two different FIRs, one being in the uh, Karimnagar jurisdiction and the another FI which was filed is under Varangal jurisdiction. The legal cell of Bharatiya Janata Party and the Bandi Sanjay's team says that the manner in which Bandi Sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the Supreme Court guidelines. On that lines, uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the High Court and there's a bail petition which is filed in Varangal Court. So we'll have to wait and watch for further developments. The India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first. When we see that the masterminds, the plotters of this attack are, are still unpunished, they are still roaming free, what can India and Israel do together to ensure that the plotters, the mastermind of this attack are punished? Everyone that took part of the terror attacks pays the price, a very heavy price. So we are still waiting for those who committed, those who sent, those who operated those terror attacks to be brought to justice and indeed we need to bring very serious pressure from all the world. In the second straight setback to the Congress party, former Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Kiran Kumar Reddy has joined the BJP. A Kiran Kumar Reddy, who served as the last Chief Minister of, a, of an undivided Andhra Pradesh, a joint BJP at a function organized at party headquarters today. This comes a day after former Defence Minister A.K. Anthony's son, Anil Anthony joined the BJP in Delhi. I am really motivated, sir, the Honorable Prime Minister. We worked as CMs for some time. We used to meet in meetings. And his commitment towards anti-corruption, not only then, from then it started and till now it is going more and more corruption uh, uh, less uh, corruption has to be reduced in the country so under their leadership i would like to join the party and whatever is assigned to me i will surely work for the upliftment of the bjp Reacting to the development, Congress hit out at uh, the leaders quitting the party. Congress leaders said that uh, those uh, joining uh, the BJP were traitors. Uh, commenting on Anil Anthony, Adiranjan Chaudhary said that uh, he would have, uh, have to live like a servant in the party, also alleging that the BJP had lured them. This Anthony लेकिन इसका मतलब यह नहीं कि वो एंटोनी है तो मुझे लगता है वो जहां भी जाए हुआ नौकर चाकर बन के रहना पड़ेगा और किरण रेड्डी साहब उनको यह लगा कि और उनको उम्मीद बचे नहीं है डेली कोविड केसेस क्रॉस्ड द 6000 मार्क Today, Union Health Minister held a COVID review meeting with uh, health ministers of all states Delhi reported over 600 cases uh, the highest since last August Enforcement Directorate has arrested the kingpin of uh, the Kerala gold smuggling case, KT Ramiz, today. According to the investigating agency, Ramiz was the facilitator of the scam and was said to be in direct touch with investors. The National Investigation Agency in a report had mentioned that KT Ramiz was the facilitator of the scam. NIA also said that uh, KT Ramiz was the key link in diverting proceeds of smuggling uh, to fund anti-national activities in South India. 
In a big show of strength, the Telangana BJP President Bandi Sanjay held a rally in Karimnagar. BJP MP from Karimnagar Bandi Sanjay said that the BJP would be hoisting the party's uh, flag in the state after assembly elections this year. The BJP Telangana chief was released from jail on Friday after being granted bail in the uh, paper leak case. Why shouldn't fake news be curbed? Time to identify and expose falsehoods. Why oppose anti-fake news fight? Debating tonight at 9 p.m. इस देश में बहुत समय के बाद एक ऐसी सरकार आई है जो सरकार टिकाने के लिए नहीं चल रही देश को सुधारने के लिए सरकार चल रही है ये पहला एक बड़ा इवेंट हुआ है जहां पे आप इस पर विस्तृत तौर से डिटेल आप बात करेंगे तो लेट अस एड्रेस ऑल इश्यूज Mediation will work when there is uncertainty of winning by any one party. This is the judgment This puts an end to the whole issue. Assertive 1% that wants to open the wounds again. They do not operate only by the verdict of the court. Dragging back economic fugitives, fantastic. But a crackdown on corruption alone, alone is not enough to steer the economy. That is where the reforms are not just to remove those who are uh, with several cases of corruption and disproportionate assets. This will ensure that at a local level, no officer can go about saying, hey, I've come to inspect you without the system approving it. सभी देश के जन जन तक सही सूचनाएं पहुंचाने में अहम भूमिका निभा रहे हैं। जब नेशन फर्स्ट होता है, तब हमारे संकल्प भी बड़े होते हैं और उनको सिद्ध करने के प्रयास भी व्यापक होते हैं। प्रधानमंत्री जी, हमने भी ठान लिया है, हमारा रिपब्लिक मीडिया नेटवर्क भी अपने कदम और भी तेज करेगा। How do you see Israel helping India in combating the water crisis? It's a major problem here in India and we have the solutions. So we are trying to work together, bringing the information, bring the technologies, uh, bringing the excellent centers that we have here in India. And I know Prime Minister Modi deals with that a lot and he was successful to bring dozens and dozens of millions to uh, accessibility to water. And this is a great success and I would like us to work more closely on that. In regard with the paper leak issue, we have been seeing how there has been two different FIRs, one being in the uh, Karimnagar jurisdiction and the another FIR which was filed is under Varangal jurisdiction. The legal cell of Bharatiya Janta Party and the Bandi Sanjay's team says that the manner in which Bandi Sanjay was arrested was not right and that is a violation of the Supreme Court guidelines. On that line, uh, there was a crash petition which was filed in the High Court and there's a bail petition which is filed in Varangal Court. So we'll have to wait and watch for further developments. India developmental model is the right model which the world can follow and that is the opportunity that we have before yes. us. I believe that you are soaked in the philosophy of nation first. It's time for Super Fast 15. Let's get started. Days after the final amendment to the information technology rules were notified, Minister of State for Electronics and IT Rajiv Chandrasekhar said the IT Ministry will form a fact 
checking unit. With respect to any misinformation about the central government, the new body will be formed to flag any kind of fake news about the government. The fact checking unit does not ask anybody to take down content. It will only point out that 